Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, boy. I'm dumb. I don't have your audio. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm gonna fix that now. So, um, the output or what I need is for select a microphone. Um, I believe is this one. Can you, can you speak? Speaking. Yep. Testing, we're anyway. back. All right. Hey, let's here. do a, Wonderful. let's do a quick, uh, so, uh, the, the warning is a little bit easier for Eli to edit later. We're going to just rewind time real quick. So just give me one second. Warning, the following content may contain elements that are not suitable for some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to the Bard's Playhouse Presents Tales from Shadow Valley, Season 3, Episode 13, The Wind Seekers. Thank you so much for joining us. Now let's bring in our wonderful cast. We have Eldritch as Khan, the bloody Ritzolo. Always great to be here. Shane as Umbromancer Zavid. I've got my coffee and I'm ready to party. And Elliot as Reese Guiltleaf, the Heart Seeker. Oh boy, guys, you got my last name on things now. As always, I am Lumby Bronzearm and we will be your DM for today. Last time, Luxatumbra continued forward within the labyrinth of Shimon Sek. Only one test remained before their ultimate goal, the Test of Pride. As they pushed on, a shocking sight lay before them. A roiling pit of magma lay beneath a wooden platform, upon which were the bound, gagged, and terrified visages of Veronique and Frankie Rizzolo, Khan's parents. A cloaked wraith levitated near a wooden lever, beckoning Luxatumbra within its chamber. Asking prodding questions, and knowing things about Khan it should not know, the wraith threatened the Rizzolos with a burning death if Khan did not answer truthfully. Through lies and half-truths, the demon attempted to gaslight Khan into a spiral of self-doubt, but failed due to her iron will. Having realized this, the pride demon showed its true form, having disguised itself as Frankie and Veronique Rizzolo. Luxatumbra leapt into action. The creature was laid low quickly, leaving one last chamber to seek. Wandering through the labyrinth once more, a suspicious noise perked up Zavid's ears. Thinking quickly, he cast a repulsion spell to keep whatever new danger this was at bay. It became quickly apparent the sound was a massive, hulking mummotaur a mummified minotaur. Ma'at the Song Pharaoh realized the mummotaur was actually her pet, Hoppy Unk, whom she had not seen in eight millennia. After a brief reunion, Hoppy Unk the mummotaur showed Luxatumbra to the Bottle of Binding. Within the bottle was a pocket dimension, stars stretching to infinity. The charred skeleton of a dwarf uh, lay, woman lay before them, the crystal prison nearby. Using their necromantic powers, Zavid and Ma'at spoke with the corpse to determine it was the body of Anyanka Jenkins, one of the adventuring companions of Reese's sister, Adelina Guiltleaf. Anyanka was raised from the dead by Ma'at, giving much-needed information about how the Windseekers met their ultimate end. Taking down the time-stop spell she had put up, Anyanka aided Luxatumbra in rescuing the bodies of Gunnar and Adelina. The time-stop having, having been taken down, Zaleshkar's prison shattered and he hurled himself into battle. Though his attacks were fierce, Zelishkar the bitter of the Bitter Flame met his ultimate end at the Blade of Khan the Bloody. Once out of the prison, the Bottle of Binding shattered, leaving Luxatumbra standing triumphantly within its central chamber once more. That's where we're coming in today. I b believe I've shared the map with you all, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, so you are within the central chamber of the Bottle of Binding. It has just shattered. The five braziers go out means showing that they are, their enchantments are no longer within this room. Ma'at looks to Hoppy Ankh and says, Well, lead on, I suppose, our pet. Well done, Luxatumbra. And Well, you know, all, the, all in a day's well. It's just not a big deal. Yeah, we do <laughs> what we can. It's fine. And it will not go unrewarded. Come, <laughs> let us head to our throne room. And Anyanka steps up to you, Zavid, and for anyone who needs that, let me pull up her pictures. Here she is. This is Anyanka Jenkins, who you just saved uh, and brought back to unlife 
from within the bottle of binding. She walks up to you, Zavid, and she says, That's quite an interesting horse you've got there. His name is Ratrat. Ratrat? You know, I yes. had a wee friend myself. I uh, haven't seen him in, well, I don't know how long I was in there or how long it's been out here. I mean, I suppose I could try to bring him back. Maybe your, maybe your Rotrot could use a friend. And she oh. begins to cast a spell. And you recognize it immediately as <laughs> It's called friend. As, uh, friend. Find friend. Find <laughs> friend. No, you recognize it as uh, summon spectral steed. Or what is it, the, sp the spell you have? Uh, phantom, phantom steed. Phantom steed. You recognize it as a high level phantom steed. And before you appears the skeletal version of a large elk. Oh, sweet. And I have a picture of it here. And she looks up to him and says, Oh, well, the last time I saw good old Dohofren here, he was had skin, but uh, I suppose that I did too, so that's what I have to do for now. And she jumps up onto the back of her elk. And the uh, Dohofren Sick. walks over kind of cautiously to Rotrot and kind of kneels its, its head down and uh, to lower its antlers in sort of a, a show of respect to Rotrot. Uh, I'll, yeah, I guess I'd just let Rotrot react as he naturally would. Uh, I doubt at this point the spirit of this horse is really perturbed by undead stuff any longer being undead himself, so he probably just looks at this as like another herb herbivorous creature. Right. Uh, like like if you're a horse on a farm and you meet another horse, you're just kind of like, who the fuck are you? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they... I think they like each other. Yeah, shall we then? And they begin to walk uh, behind the rest of you. I'll make sure that uh, these corpses are f securely fastened so we don't accidentally drop uh, yes. Reese's sibling or something. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't want to be disrespectful yeah. to the dead. Yeah. Uh, Reese would probably try to kill Savid if he did. I'm like, I'm like strapping them in. I'm like, it's a little tight. And I just start like kicking one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I like, you know, do like a really tight like granny knot. That's going to be a bitch to untie later. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Man, does Reese really trust Savid? He's tying his sister up in tight knots. I mean, you did teach him I, how to tie I knots. Learned, I yep. learned how to tie some, some good knots. And it's you true. also have ant haul ups. You can kind of hold them with one hand to keep them steady if you need while riding. Yeah. Hey, and look, <laughs> they're tied to the horse. If the <laughs> if the ropes become loose, we'll just be dragging the bodies behind the horse. <laughs> Don't worry, they're not getting loose. They're gonna the, uh -huh. they're following us. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I'm just kind of moving around here. <laughs> Reminds me of a movie. There was a movie where someone had like their body or something. They were like separate, separated from their body, and it kept getting like beat up and like uh, destroyed in some way. They're like, "Stop it! I need that." <laughs> I feel like that's kind of what we're Very we're in similar. for. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but as you're walking and talking, uh, the Hoppy Yonk, the Mumator waits at certain points for the labyrinth to, to rotate and move so that he can walk you in uh, the, the proper way how he knows. It seems illogical, the path that he takes. Uh, sometimes he doubles back, then he waits for a while. Sometimes he'll sit and have a snack while waiting for something to rotate. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's fully illogical seeming to all of you, but he's been doing this for eight millennia, so he knows exactly which way to go uh, and how to get around in here. And then at one of the junctures where you're just kind of waiting, Ma'at eventually comes up to you, Zabid. Uh, let's move Ollie kind of into this room. Roughly. Yeah, I can't move Rot Trot yeah, with I the bodies. Uh, just get a horse. And I can move all of them at the same time, like that. There we go. Sweet. Cool. Uh, so, rough that in here, here ish. Uh, it's. It, um, Papiank shows you that this is a moment to kind of sit down. We have to wait for something to rotate. Mm -hmm. um, Ma'at comes up to you, Zavid, and she says, Umbra Man, sir, tell us about this Shadow Valley. This is your fortress, yes? 
Our fortress. Just it, mine. Your fortress. Yours, the plural. Yes. Yes. Uh, it is a former hideaway for a cult that tried to destroy Etran's Folly, which is a small village on the surface, with a, an item called a plague stone, a big stone that within conceals a deadly disease. Uh, if enough force is applied to the stone, the disease is unleashed and a very bad time for everybody. It's so volatile and dangerous, we haven't even moved the stone. We're too scared to do it. It could oh, go man. off in just transporting it, so we've just left it there and told everyone to leave it the hell alone. Well, it sounds like you could do with a bit more security around the area. Yes, yes, we, that would be helpful, as if it did go off, uh, Shadows Valley would be affected, just like Etran's Folly. And it would seem that... Chompy has taken quite a liking to you. I like him too. <laughs> well, it is clear that Chompy wants to go with you and can offer quite a bit of security for Shadow Valley and this Etrin's folly. However, as we were walking through the labyrinth, we spoke with Harpyonk. He, he told us that he and Chompy have been friends for millennia. He would be very sad <laughs> if Chompy and he will be to be separated. No! Which is why we would like to offer the Mamator to live at Shadow Valley with Chompy. He could provide an excellent amount of security, both for your fortress and for your city. I'm gonna st uh, Shane's going to step away and just be like, I'm going to put this trauma to the side. <laughs> my <laughs> my mummy minotaur <laughs> trauma. My three dead Pathfinder characters. I love you both. Mm -hmm. We're going to put you to the side. <laughs> We're moving on with Zavid now. Back into Zavid. He goes, now you can control it. Now it's yours. Yeah, he says, I am worried that he might be, he might feel claustrophobic. I think he likes these big mazes. Uh, we have a mountainside with lots of bedrock that could be dug out to create something like a maze, but it would take some time. Would he be all right spending the time to create his own? It would not shift around like this magical one. It'd be very crude, rudimentary. She looks back to the Mumator and you can see him sitting, like turned away, but kind of looking back at you guys like I'll, this. I'll yell out kind of a looking, necro. Like, like we have like a mountain this. with no maze, but you can dig one out yourself. Do you like that idea? And he nods his head and a bunch of steam shoots out his nostrils. I guess it's sort of like if you've never had an opportunity to make your own maze. Uh, you've only had to live in one that you didn't make. It'd be kind of cool. And he, he reaches into his backpack and pulls out this huge scroll. It's like a tapestry for you, for your side. She unravels it like like a sheet. He's designed a maze. An insane <laughs> maze that's just fractal <laughs> everywhere. Designs, intricate levels. On we gotta dig down. We gotta go level. down, yeah. yeah. It's literally like a, like a sheet uh, that has this. He's been down here for 8,000 years. <laughs> thinking I, about mazes i'm like at first i was sort of unsure i'm not sure he'd be happy and i see that i go he's an asset we'll take him <laughs> <laughs> and he and chompy look to each other and he the, uh puppy young the moment tour leans real far down he puts his hoof up like this and uh chompy comes up and sticks his tongue out and they they high five kind of oh <laughs> tongue the hoof, and then he kind of sticks and then chompy slides off well, uh, we're gonna have. Settled. We're creating a dungeon, folks. We're oh making a dungeon. Oh my god, we are. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh -oh. Shadow Valley will just be a dungeon for a, like a later campaign yeah. that Eli runs for different people. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, let me see. So... When we're either like long dead or having our our oh, no. wonderful we... adventures. I'm gonna be a lich. You're going to be like immortal in some way. Uh, and Reese is just an elf who's just gonna still be alive. Like, yeah. you're just gonna have that elven long, uh, long jeopardy. life. And you're yeah. gonna look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Han will have gotten so good, or so confident, that she will just claim that she's immortal and it just becomes true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
she, that's how confident she'll be at level 20. I feel like if, if not, it, it, yeah, if not that, you're going to have just seven different magical items that grant you different versions of immortality. So if you lose any one, you're like, well, I still got my other six that do all these <laughs> other things. <laughs> and you're working on like... an eighth. You're making an eighth one of immortality. Grace is gonna be 800 and still look like a little twing. It's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of Reese, uh, during all of this, Anyanka has been looking at you a lot, Reese, and eventually she just comes up to you and says, You've gotten so tall. You're a lot taller than Adelina. Well, you know, tallness uh, happens. Not everybody can be like six foot eight. Wait, how tall yeah. was I when I was. I don't remember. Well, you were only nine when we went into the labyrinth. So you were six foot eight at nine. <laughs> you shrunk. I was probably like five foot tall. You were, you were only about knee high to a grasshopper at the time. <laughs> wow, I can't that, even that, think about that. Was that was from time. my childhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds probably about right. I, actually, now that I think about it, hold on a moment. Yeah. And she walks over to Zavid and Rotrot, and she says, Well, and I don't know if you want to see this now, but she has a locket that has a picture of you when you were a child. Let's get this embarrassment over now. Yes. So, Anyanka goes over to the body of Adelina. She looks very similar to you, just with dark hair. And she reaches into her cloak and pulls out this golden locket. It has a little heart with elven filigree around it. And within is a carved portrait of Adelina and a little boy. Oh my god. That's so freaking cute. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just That's I that know your reference. Last... Yeah, I no, see clearly. this reference. Yeah, obviously. It's obvious. I'm not hiding it. It's a ah, labyrinth reference. I don't care. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Now, you see, that's what you looked like the last time I saw you. This is the race I remember. That was a little guy. Like I said, you were only nine. You're not an elf. That is true. That is how elves work. And <laughs> he just can't stop looking at, like, this small baby version of him. It's like, and he looks over to Khan and is like, Hey Khan, guess what? I used to be as tiny as you once! Look! <laughs> yeah. She, she, she gets mad for no reason. <laughs> I was never a child. <laughs> like a uh, trunch bolt from <laughs> Matilda. Just, you... I've never, I was always an adult my whole life. <laughs> You just, uh, did you, you know, ma uh, materialize one day? Is he well? I came out of a pod. <laughs> they, they, that's what they taught us. Boy, there's these pods <laughs> on the sides of cliffs, and I sort of, like, it opened up, and this goo came out, and I, like, or a Kai from <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Uh, and I killed the first thing near me. I choked him out, like, ah, and I broke his neck. Like a shark in the womb. Yeah. It was, it was a cool birth, and then I was I was just here. How do I get rid of that um that marker? By the way. Oh. Uh... Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah. I went also, to move Reese, and I accidentally pressed a button. If anyone wants to try to roll like a perception check to see if I'm lying. Oh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah, you're welcome to. Uh, roll them publicly. Check this out. To 13. <laughs> oh my god. The funny thing is, no, no, one, numerically dude, she beat you, but because it was a nat one, it becomes a failure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Khan. Khan uh, you believe him. Just be he might Yeah, be I think I think you're sort of like you've never heard of anything like that, but Zavid's so weird, it might be true. Yeah, like <laughs> Zavid is just such the most he's, bizarre guy that Khan has ever met, and she grew up in a circus. He like, you know, every time his a bone would nearly break, his body just bends and morphs to prevent the breakage, and like he can put stuff in his shadow. Like, yeah, sure, Podman, what? Why not? Right? Yeah, yeah. 
It might as well be true. Right, uh, might as well be. Meanwhile, did you roll Reese? a zero? How did you roll a zero? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I I accidentally did the the um manual dice thing, and I don't know how to fix it. I have no idea what that is. Manual um, roll. Yeah. Let me see. Manual here. dice entry. We'll we'll turn that off. Let's try that again. Yeah, turn that off. <laughs> Whatever that is. Wow. Because um, you can't roll a zero. There we go. Oh, I was close to a net one. Uh, obviously, he's lying. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reese just looks over and is like, "Of course, buddy. I believe you." Thank As you for doing so. Conversation. The. Uh, the circular section to yourself <laughs> changes hey. a little bit, revealing that it's cut off here, which is interesting because before it was open to the south. But again, Hapionk knows his way around here, so he continues off in this direction. And at this point, uh, we can basically theater the mind the rest of it getting to the end. That was sure. all I wanted to do Ooh. in the labyrinth itself. So let me swap maps really quick, like walk amongst selves for a moment so we're walking through this little hall the clip clops of these these uh undead mounts the hopping of a mimic the i guess there's a clip like a heavy clop of the the minotaur as it's you know stomping through and i'm just like so I thought, were we supposed to... Was, the, was that it? We just, uh... We fought a little demon man and his little demon friends, and we're, we're good. Yeah, that was actually a pretty yeah, simple. That's, yeah, that's what we were sent in here to do. I just get this feeling like... That was easier than I thought. And I'm not trying to, like, this isn't a humble brag. I just, I feel like there's something else, like maybe something are waiting around the corner for us. I can't I mean... relax. When one is looking an apocalypse in the face, it is difficult to relax. I agree. True. <laughs> there's, there's got to Zavid, be one of the planets that does that. We have an idea. Why don't you take a quick dip in the treasure swim room? That might put your mind at ease. That would do the opposite. <laughs> uh, hey, you're a healer, right? Yes. How, 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 fa for. how familiar are you with dragon sickness? Well, it is quite difficult to remove. It oh. is. <laughs> yes. So, uh, and I'm going to tell her about the time that I took on another man's curse so that he could die a natural, normal death, and then... Reese wasn't there. You nope. should actually describe that a little Reese's... bit more. Reese's... Yeah, please. I have no, no idea Reese what wasn't... this Reese and on. Elliot weren't there for that. That was Danny's dad. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Sorry. Uh, so... Uh, long... Not that long ago, actually. Kind of recently, in, in relative terms of how <laughs> ancient we all can be. Um... But uh, I went to the kingdom of Druma, surface kingdom, a new kingdom probably did not exist back when you were roaming the world. And um, the uh, the king of Druma uh, married an elven woman uh, who had a very special bloodline. This is that bloodline we talked about that has uh, to do with the apocalypse, right? Ah, yes, yes. The youngest daughter is Danny. Danny is uh, our friend who's who's helping run the kingdom as its queen and. Uh, for the longest time, she was a princess locked away in the tower. Race was actually her childhood friend and would climb up the tower and visit her. Constantly. Um, the reason she was locked up was to protect her, but it soon became a bit of a toxic situation. The father had accrued all of this treasure, developed a dragon sickness, and then became very greedy about not letting anyone in yes, or out yes. of the castle. He also had a very bad sort of vizier uh, type character who was like whispering oh, yes. in his ear and making him... Yeah, so bad situation. We knew about it. We had to sneak into Druma, take care of it. But we did not want to kill Danny's father. No matter how bad he must have gotten, it was dragon sickness and this vizier that made him this way. I uh, prayed to my god and I sort of came to a revelation about the abilities that I was offered at the time that if dragon sickness is not actually sickness but a curse I could take on their curse 
Uh, it was uh, the 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 vizier's name was Arch Archibus Baldabard. Archibus Baldabard, or Archibald, as I would call him. Um, Archibut. <laughs> Archibut. <laughs> But but a butt, I think at some I, point. I, I, I gotta say, I'm very proud of that character because he was such a fucking shit. You guys hated him so a, a, much. Ass a butt, he was the worst guy. He was just the worst. I'm very proud of him. Yeah, how much yeah. you guys hated. You him. found really good art of some guy doing like <laughs> like this, and he's got like that like weird of kind did of he, uh, hairdo. Yeah, did he sound I like Gilbert Gottfried by any chance? No, I'll I'll show you the art. Oh, no, he sounded like this. Yeah, he was like a no. male Karen type yeah. of situation. <laughs> this is Archibus Baldabard, second in command to the King of Druma. Do uh. you not know who he is? Oh, yeah. God, I hate him. Do not question Baldabard. Yeah, oh, they killed the <laughs> shit out of him. Please, speak, God. Speak not of my skin color. I yeah. have... A advanced form of jaundice. Yeah, exactly. He was um, just the worst. Oh, so we killed that guy in a brothel. That was great. Nobody yeah, has to killed deal him with him anymore. Um, they killed him on his knees in a brothel. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. A fitting death for him. Yeah. Uh, we we went into the throne room surrounded by treasure. You know what? You're doing, I'm going to say you're doing like minor images here, and I'm going to be pulling up pictures as you're doing it. Sure, yeah, I can do that. Um, and uh, the king was not aware of us sort of sneaking up. I needed to get the range to take the curse before combat could break out, and he would have kicked our asses had it done so. I was able to pull away the dragon sickness and take it into myself, and it was a lot. This guy was sick. I wanted nothing more than to roll around in the treasure, take it all for myself, it took every ounce of my willpower to channel my greed into something beneficial for the group. I had to pretend like my allies were my possessions. So if they had to do anything with the treasure, it wasn't them stealing. It was my possessions handling my possessions, right? I had to think about it like that so that I didn't get overcome with great sort of anger or jealousy of like they don't touch my treasure Ever, anything i could do any mind trick i could pull to not think that way after about 20 minutes not even i had to cast it twice we had 10 minutes where danny got to bring her father upstairs i cast it again before it could come back and uh he his unnaturally long life for a human ended naturally he passed away from old age but because there was no one to return the curse to, most of it evaporated, but some of it did not. I still have a lingering bit of that curse on me, even though I've never been rich in my life. Uh, I have, we have now accrued some sort of wealth, but I don't like looking at it. I just like to know I have purchasing power when I need it. So I don't know what to do. Uh, Mott, if you could somehow remove this curse from me because I've tried and I can't um, th it's tricky because it's not like a whole curse it's like the remnants of a curse it only flares up when I see great amounts of wealth so uh, if there was a way to remove this it would make my life a lot easier I have an idea come with us she pushes me down the stairs ah! <laughs> <laughs> and you're not thinking about your you. curse anymore are you <laughs> right she'll lead you past the central chamber where all of the dancing goblins are still dancing there's guards section he, she brings you up to the the treasure the treasure swimming rooms and it'll take me a second to move uh everything hey but i can get all of those at once sweet <laughs> There we are. Perfect. So you guys can move yourselves kind of over there to the top right. All right, let's do that. Shift. Great. Where are we? Are over here. Flying through space. <laughs> Come on. Oh, shift, shift. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> then here, and then moment for floating up in space. There we go. All right. So Ma'at walks into the the room that you, you see piled with treasure. And there's a goblin 
nap napping on top of this pile of gems and coins. And Ma'at says, little one, we need a moment, please. And it wakes up ah! in kind of a start and bolts it out of the, uh, out of the room. Oh, there's two of them. Uh, yeah. Both of these goblins bolt out of that room and run into the other one and fall back. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and she levitates in over the center of this these coins, uh, this huge mass of wealth. She says, come in. How do you feel, I... Romancer? Uh, he's sweating. <laughs> I feel Roll great. Uh, yeah, there we go. Not great. So yeah, you're kind of twitching. And she says, she comes up to you and says, Be healed. Touches your forehead. And she I... casts a lay on hands with on you that has greater mercy because she's a blessed one. What does that mean? She took the Blessed One dedication, which right. uh, essentially allows anyone to take Lay on Hands. You don't have to be a paladin. And there are feats called Mercies, which add bonuses to your Lay on Hands. So in oh. addition to healing, you can like take away poison or take away disease. She has greater mercy that takes away curses. Uh, so as she comes over and says, be healed, I'm like, oh, I'm really sure that's gonna... Blah! And like, like, <laughs> Almost urges. knocks you clean on your ass. Uh, I, I imagine it's like this sort of flash of light and then like this green sort of vapor poof, gets expelled from the back of him, uh, the remnants of that dragon curse. And you guys probably haven't noticed... Uh, but now that it's gone, you see that his skin had, had just the slightest greenish hue to it, and now it's... This is like a whole new person to Reese. This is a whole new feel... person to Reese, actually. Now, step on the pile and see how you feel. My feet hurt. <laughs> you do not need to roll a will save. I kick a gem into the wall. Ha ha ha! Yes! Fuck treasure! <laughs> and I run out, and I'll even take a few coins on me, and I throw it in the room. I don't need it! <laughs> and I run onto my horse, uh, and then I'm like, but, you know, I do like this one gem, and I'm like, like grab an onyx gem or something from the pile, like a really big fat one that I could put on the end of my, uh, uh, of my staff or something. Perfect. Very well. Let us re away to the throne. Oh, Where are you going? Come back! <laughs> Go back Rot Wait, Trot. Rot Trot, I'm supposed to ride with you. Uh, ah. uh, you, oh, you, move, you. Chompy. Anyanka. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's weird. I can move Anyanka. I can't move. Oh, you Rot can't Trot. move. Mode? Oh, yeah. It's because uh, Rot Trot isn't a player. Rot Trot's just an image. All right. So as you are walking into the throne room. The guards all stand even more upright. Uh, as, and I have images of them all, I believe. Let me see here. Yeah. There's some the bugbears, guards, it looks like. Guards around the center are goblins who wear very deserty themed outfits. They have large, broad axes that they wield with two <sighs> hands, but they stand at sharp attention. There are indeed uh, and in ancient Osiriani, they say a greeting uh, that to our ears in English sounds like Merry Christmas, but it actually means <laughs> <laughs> be well or uh, yes. be at ease. But there are also very huge bugbears with ma uh, mauls and gr great swords uh, on either side of this walkway in this throne room. Massive goblinoids of all kinds. And of course, at the far end, Sitting upon the, his decadent, bepillowed throne is the Goblin King of Shimonsek. Of course, in his hobgoblin form, clearly. He rises as you enter. Ah, our most effervescent and light-bringing one. Welcome back. It, it appears that you come back on the wings of victory, yes? And he looks to all of you. No, he's free and he's coming here. <laughs> you think I do not know what is going on below my own feet. Uh, you are a funny man. I am a bad liar. <laughs> uh, but Ma'at says, 
yes. We do require the use of the the sigil upon the floor, however. Please, away from our throne. And the goblin king, oh, yes, yes, of course, of course. And he quickly moves away off of the throne. And Ma'at slowly walks up again, comes to the center, and says to you, bring them forth. Oh, yeah, the bodies. Uh, <laughs> take them off. The... <laughs> I'm like, who? Bring who? Oh, yeah. Um, bring forward these bodies of the ant hall, kind of set them down. And I think you need two other casters, right? You need Reese and Khan. Or who, what, what do, you need, do you need for Resurrect? I don't recall. Uh, I'm looking. Hold on. Resurrect. Where's my resurrect uh, ritual? There it is. I need uh, diamonds worth a total of 75 gold pieces per their level, which we can get from the treasure room. You have the, yeah, either the treasure room or you already have them in your bag of holding from uh, Cicely Cash's hoard. That's right. Uh, so I I'm going to try to use the treasure room. <laughs> I don't want yeah, us to just fine. use up our, our personal. That's um, I have to make a uh, religion check but i need secondary checks that are either medicine or society oh i got the society down <laughs> your society medicine? medicine would be good maad is a master at medicine perfect so tower um, or public these will be public um and i can have as many uh secondary casters i think i need two it's two cat secondaries at least but i think i can you can have more if you need them you can and also she's going to be giving guidance to all of you so that's actually a 41 there reese oh uh, fuck okay so one second i need to find the dc y'all are level 14 so let's see 32 so yes that is a success almost a crit you're one off of a crit um then Maat gives herself guidance. Oh, natural 19 for a 43. Maat critted. Uh Ooh. so that's a success and a crit, so that's a plus three plus guidance is four. Um so before you roll, Zavid, uh I want you to kind of describe how this ritual is going at the moment. Just, but just don't roll yet. Like, how are you setting okay. this up? What are you doing? Um, am I doing both at once or just one mm -hmm. and then the other? Since Maad is helping you and she's a lich, essentially, you're get it's one ritual for the both of them. Uh, I would like to make a society check to see if I know uh anything about ancient Osiriani culture since I'm on Osirian land and we're using Osirian like can I help? paraphernalia to do this ritual. Uh, can I make a society check for that? Sure. Roll that in the tower. I want to know about like funeral rites and and all that, like what the gods okay. of death are okay. like here. Uh, you know that the gods of death are kind of easy come easy go as far as transferring between life and death. Uh, <clears throat> they're much more open than the gods of Avistan to the north that you're used to dealing with. Um, death is more of a portal rather than a destination. Uh, so you know that they're much more forgiving than the ones that you would have to deal with farther north. Reese, you recall something in the letter from Adelino. You remember it mentioned that they came here seeking the genie's wish, which maybe that could help. Reese looks over to his father. Okay, so I'm just gonna give this to you. I need it back. But there's some mention of you. Yes, I see. Well, to attract strong adventurers such as yourself, I, in a uh did offer to give a genius wish to any who completed the labyrinth. You, Luxatumbra, have done so. Now, unfortunately, one of the three rules, as I am sure you know, is you cannot bring anyone back from the dead. This is an unfortunate thing. I am physically incapable of doing it. It would be like asking you to breathe in space. You cannot do it. It is not that I do not want to help you. However, 
I have had eight millennia of luxurious comfort to sit and think about the loopholes and such. I have thought about a situation such as this in my past. Now, you could not wish for me to bring your, your sister and her compatriot back. However, you could wish for uh, all of you to have certain advantages in your ritual. Hmm. Is that something that we want? I feel very confident we can bring them back. I think uh, a wish is a very powerful thing. And uh, and this is... Uh, I look to How you, many? Reese. I say, I, I'm oh. not... I'm not... Yeah, is it one per person or is it uh, just one? It's a one. A conglomerate. I think we should save it. I, Reese, I know you, you care about your sister and I want to bring your sibling back... I'm going to do my best. We are maybe the best people on the continent. Well, maybe not, actually. Now that I think about what else is on this <laughs> continent. <laughs> We're some of the best people to bring people back. If anyone could do it, it would be us. I don't know if we need the wish, but it's up to you. No, let's hold on to it. It you might will. be useful in other ways, and as much as I want to think about myself, this whole time I've been trying not to. So, we... I believe in us. We, we, we did I. the brain in the jar thing, so like... You completed the labyrinth that no one in a thousand years was able to complete. That too. Very well. well. These folks, these folks came close. The least we could do is bring them back. As far as I am aware, they are the only ones to make it within the bottle of binding. I All others were cleaned out by the cube. Using what I know of ancient Osiriani, I'm going to <laughs> offer an exchange, just like when you offer a uh, fair for the boatman, you know, that sort of ritual. Um, in addition to the diamonds, uh, I, I want to sacrifice a, uh, a measure of, like, wealth to the, to Hathor and those, those gods, uh, to allow an easy transfer of souls back, like, in exchange for bringing these souls back, here's a bit of wealth for your hordes. Um, so, like, for each of them, I'm thinking, out of Zavid's personal share, like, I would offer like a thousand gold per person. I feel like that's a fuck ton of money. Okay. Um, Let's think here. What do I want? How do I want that to affect things? That's a very interesting thing to do. I like it. So you already have a plus four to your religion check. Hmm. No, that wouldn't help. <laughs> Just give yourself a plus six. All right. I like that. Uh, so that 2,000 sounds... gold is quite a, a lot of... That's not an insignificant amount of sacrifice. Um, I said that one needs to come from your stash, though. The diamonds yes, or that's what the I said. material yeah. components can come from the treasure room. But uh, yeah, if you're doing a personal sacrifice, it needs to be a personal I, sacrifice. Also, as a, as a means of flexing that I'm no longer got dragon sickness. Like, that that sound, I don't even gone. care. I don't even care about it. Um... And then with my ritualist dedication, I just get a plus two circumstance bonus. So that's plus eight on this. Yeah. Uh, so, so public plus eight. Are we, are we ready? I don't know we're ready for this. Look, I have hero points saved up for this. Yeah. Uh, your DC is 35. 30, oh, easy. <laughs> easy. You kidding me? Oh. How's a 48? Oh. <laughs> that's a crit. Uh, so describe how this describe this. What what does everyone see? How does this happen? Um, a sort of ancient hieroglyphics. Uh, again, these these rituals can take any form they need to, based on location and based on like, uh, sort of the powers that be. Um, in so in this variation, uh, ancient Osiriani hieroglyphics start to glow around this sort of ring, um, and dark sort of shadowy tendrils start to like lift their bodies up um sort of getting them in a sort like a 
like like these empty receptacles are about to receive like their souls back kind of get them in that position and uh a sort of bright light as two faintly visible wisps like like a spiral helix come down from almost nowhere from like the ceiling and then split off entering the mouths of each person surface wounds from uh when they were killed uh scorched marks cuts all that stuff close up and uh life the like fogged over glassy eyes life returns to them um they are not in great condition but they hopefully are going to be alive once again and i think while you're doing that reese is going to walk over and just go to his sister and just hold her in his arms just if that's the last bit of death that's the last bit of death but if she can wake up and see his face he knows that would have probably meant a lot i'm also going to get a water skin ready so that they can get a drink the <laughs> first thing like you're back you're dehydrated drink some water <laughs> her eyes slowly flutter as you can see her pupils dilating and she looks up at you and she says who are you you don't even recognize your own brother? He... She starts shaking her head. I... Uh, where have we been, brother? What are you talking about? Oh, you know. Do you have a good party member that stopped time? And uh, we brought you back. So you're not, like, many years dead? Is that you, Reese? Looks over to the Goblin King. Last time I checked, yes. Uh, you're I so leave. old. <laughs> <laughs> you scurvy dog, you're so old. What in the hell have you been doing? What happened to us? Um, well, we defeated the great evil. In the labyrinth. Um, about 50 some odd years has passed. A uh, hundred or so. It's, it's many years. I I can't even recall. No, it's, it's like a hundred years or so. Um, yeah. And as I'll describe for, for a moment, uh, you, all of you see a beautiful young elf woman who has long honey brown hair and sharp ears. There's a large scar across her face and nose, Zavid, that formed when you resurrected her. It's stitched together and formed a big scar right across her face. She wears leather armor uh, with her long sleeves and her hair is in an intricate braid. But she looks up to all of you and she says, you got us out of that labyrinth? I thought all of us died. You did. As Gunnar is like coming to as well, I, I imagine Anyanka and I get like right up in his face, like "Welcome back!" and like <laughs> kind of scare him, <laughs> ho hopefully to death again. <laughs> yeah, and now I'll switch over to that. Uh, what you see is a human man with a brown beard and long gray hair. Uh, he wears furs and leathers and has a wooden shield and a hand Whoa. axe. Uh, he looks That's up how he is when he wakes up. Ah! <laughs> he <looks> Skeletons! Up. <laughs> he, he opens his eyes and he says, Where is the mead hall? Where are my wenches? You're not wenches. Do you have mead? All right, I'm done with this guy. Uh, <laughs> let's get back to this touching reunion. <laughs> I can't believe, I can't believe you're so old, Reese. How long was I dead? Um, and he looks over to my, uh, um, I'm going to let her take over. Um, I, I'm still processing about many years. Um, this is her, th this was her labyrinth, though. Yes. You came into our labyrinth seeking the genie's wish. You died within the prison of Zelashkar, the bitter flame. However, take solace in the fact that you were the only ones within eight millennia to get that far. Until your brother, that is. These people pulled you out and brought you back. Oh, a true windseeker. Reese, I'm proud of you. 
Never really uh, heard that before, so thank you. Is Reese? How's Reese dressed? Are you? Because like I'm looking at uh, Adelina, and she's got like very like nicely kept looking sort of armor and stuff. Reese, you're like a rogue. Are you sort of dressed in kind of goblin-y ish rags? Like no, no, that was just the art that we chose. Oh, um, okay. Reese typically though dresses pretty neutral because he knows that like. He can disguise himself as anything to see fit. So it's honestly pretty simple clothing, actually kind of like hers, except it's a little bit more like green and brownish. Um, and he's a ranger, so like the rogueness oh. is what like, kind of like he sometimes has like his like scarf around him, but that's about it. It's like kind of like one of those scarves that have like a hood. Um, <laughs> So I forget you, you are it. a ranger. I, I you mm -hmm. just play like a rogue sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> and a ranger. It gets that gets in my head. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's the thing. Um, Reese is a little hybrid, but mostly ranger. But dress is pretty normal. Um, otherwise, just in like browns and greens. But there are weapons visible, always. Uh, I guess I'll point over to Anyanka and say, I'm sorry that you're. Uh very talented wizard friend that couldn't make it out with her skin. Yeah, it's all right. This this one, br these two brought me back, but I couldn't quite make it out, Adelina. I I, I didn't get the letter to Reese. They eventually found it, but I, I tried my best. Uh, I know you did, Paige. You tried, and that's all that matters. And Adelina goes over to Anyanka and gives her a big hug not even considering that she's a skeleton at this point. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I mean, if you want me to do a separate ritual, we could break Anyanka, killing her, and then bring her back, but this time as, like, herself uh, with the flesh. It, again, is a risk. It might not work. So it's sort of, do you want to take that risk? And Anyanka looks at her, her hands, and she looks down at herself, and she says, Well, honestly... I've never been this skinny. I think I might stay. <laughs> okay. Just uh, be careful of strong winds. Don't want to take off, not do I? Not with that my broomstick. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and Gunnar comes up to you, Zavid, and he says, I don't want to shake the hand of the man who brought me back. My name is Gunnar Gunnar son, son, son of Gunnar Gunnar son, son of Gunnar Gunnar. And he like shakes my hand and squeezes and it's it like so deforms hard. into putty. Yeah. It's like <laughs> there's no crack. It does. Yeah. And then it like it slowly blows up and like comes back into its like normal a stretch shape. Armstrong. Yeah, very much like a stretch arms. I'm like, good to officially meet you. I saw that you really gave them hell inside the bottle before you went down. Well, you know, us berserkers got to go out with a bang. Otherwise, you don't get to Valhalla. Sorry I, to prevent you from reaching there in time, but I'm sure you'll have another opportunity. As long as I die in battle. Now tell me, you brought me back for a battle, yes? Is that why we brought him back? Well well, I mean, there is a big battle of the universe that we would very much appreciate the Wind Seekers. Yes. Help with. <laughs> yes, we did bring you back for a battle. That's why we did that. And Reese also oh, looks yeah. over to his sister. It's just like, wait, you like weapons. I like weapons. That's a barbarian of sorts. What are you? I'm a trained what fighter. Are you? Oh, okay. That makes sense. I fight... I'm a duelist, really. I like to fight with just my... Oh, damn! And she looks at her sword, and she unsh and she picks it up, and it's, it's shattered at halfway through. It's just a, sh it's a really short sword, a little brid uh, sh rigid edge, and she says, My flame my flame tongue broke. Well... Uh, we have people that can fix it. Uh... uh... I can fix it now. I mean, obviously, <laughs> Khan's always going to be better at me than this, but I took magical crafting so I can help. Oh, hey, you Khan. can actually help repair this. Yeah, I really come appreciate over. that. Who is this one then? 
This one is Khan. She's an amazing rogue, really. Like Speaking like, uh, this one is Khan. <laughs> this one is Khan. <laughs> Khan the bloody, if I uh, should get proper introductions. And I appreciate that, please. Thank you, thank you. Um, but yes, I I can I can fix up this so but it's it's almost as cool as bringing people back from the dead, you know. I would be much obliged if you could do that. I I'm not much use without my sword. I mean, I've got. And she pulls like her rucksack off her bag and clunk, clunk, knocks it on the floor. She opens it up. She goes, I only have three throwing axes. A shield, uh, two hammers, uh, daggers, three short swords, and it's, uh, it I'm runs not in the family. My main sword. <laughs> I mean, what what if I could? What if we just you know? What what if, what if we what if we fused all of those together, just making uh, 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 you know. uh, dagger, 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 sword, sword, sword? Yeah, <laughs> I, did, I did have an idea once. Sword chucks. You take nunchucks, and you put swords on the end of them. Can you imagine such a thing? That I'll believe it when amazing. I see you kill things with it. <laughs> You'd be more likely to kill yourself with it, I think. Practice This one perfect. and her swords, it's all she thinks about. I'm gonna squeeze past that while they're talking about That also runs in the family, chucks. and he winks over. <laughs> Uh, I want to talk to Balog Makar. Oh, wonderful. Yes, indeed. What, what may I do for you? May I ask you some questions about the nature of the wish without there being any misunderstanding that I was making any wish? I'm not. I'm not making anything. I just want yes, to get a better understanding of what's allowed. Of course. Now, I am not the one who gets to decide what this is going to be. So, obviously... I'm just asking for my own curiosity, but would you be able to grant a wish about, say, anything even involving sort of that uh, that challenge to become a god, that thing that they do in uh, the city of uh, cities? The challenge of the star store. Hmm. Yes. For example, you obviously cannot make me win. That would be a violation of the rules, but... No one is able to know what it will look like on the inside. What if I wished, again, this is hypothetical, for a map of what it will look like when I challenge, if I were to challenge? I would need to look into the deep probabilities of the di of divination, but I suppose this is not fully improbable. So there are workers. That's what I was just wanted to know. That's I, something very. I, said, I feel I have, I have a magic a map is doable, years. you know. Like that's yes. not so bad. <laughs> or we, I could give you an advantage aura, hmm. so that you have certain advantages to all of the skill checks that you make. In a way, because he doesn't know what a skill check is. <laughs> right. In a way, being just granted a boon like that would be very cool but i feel like if i were to succeed and ascend the godhood all the gods would be like you couldn't do it without the wish mm -hmm. so with a map or something like a tool it is still on me to be able to use my brains and brawn and magic the stuff i already have at my disposal to get to where i need to be not that uh, anyone would any mortal would have anything to say about it because they're still mortal at that point, but uh, I don't know. I guess I was just curious if that was even a possibility. We might what have to use... Thinking? Yeah, we might have to use a wish for something more important than my personal ambitions. You are a deep thinker, thinking about the reactions of other gods. Yes, think on this longer, but there are... There are workarounds, there are loopholes you can fill. Uh, how often do you grant wishes? Is there another way to gain a, like another wish from you? Do we have to perform a service or something like that? Precisely. My service was guarding the labyrinth. And it has been fulfilled. So what is your plan? Are you returning to the 
land of genies, or are you going I to have, stick around? I have promised the effervescent sun goddess Ra Ma'at that I will leave Vin my services to all of you during the conjunction, if need be. However, I have laid in luxury and sloth for eight millennia. I have grown fat and weak. I am going to return to the elemental plane of fire to recharge. When the time is right, I shall return to you at my full power. Sick. Awesome. <laughs> Reese looks uh, over to his sisters like, you guys were here for a wish. I don't know if it'll still translate over in today's date with what's going on, but do you guys think of what it was? Oh, that's right. Came here to wish that our ma had never become a lessener. A what? Oh. I suppose you don't really know where you came from, do you, Reese? No, not really. Well, do any of you have a map? Um, I know Zavid does. <laughs> <laughs> I whip that bad boy out and I uh, give it right to them. Yeah, and I'm right. looking I'm looking at them and then glancing back at Reese like, lore, lore, lore. Let's get it, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. I've been waiting for this lore dump. <laughs> So, you see, the three of us, we call, we call ourselves the Wind Seekers because, well, we seek the wind upon our airship, the Wind Seeker. Uh, we crashed it down in the desert. Uh, that was really how we, we got on foot and had to come here to Shimon Sek. That way, it's probably still out there. Uh, the eternal storm took us down. No one can get in or out of that thing. Anyway, uh, Reese. We come from a very far away place, nowhere near here in Assyrian. And she, let me switch to drawing mode. We're here, down in the deserts of Assyrian, in the southern continent. We're from here, up to the northwest in the Sogalands. You're a spire elf, Reese. Have you heard You're of wizard, the- Harry. <laughs> Have you heard of the Earthfall? No. When the rocks yeah, from no. the sky. Yes. Yeah, right. We have. We talked to some dwarves okay. who are all about that. Yes. Rocks from the sky smashed into the ground and destroyed the continent of Aslant. Well, it's not the whole story. <laughs> One of the gods tried to stop the meteor and hit it with its own body. And instead of one large rock, shattered it into multiple rocks. But the god died at, this, at that time, goddess of the moon. Her body fell into the hole, the remains of Aslant, and her spirit tried to reach the heavens, building a spire. Well, the few straggling remainers of the Aslant Empire, sea elves, were drawn to it like moths to a flame. Most of them saw visions, heard things. They are called listeners. And our ma became one. She's damn near been mindless as long as I can remember. Just standing at that damned tower looking at the sky. I came here to try and make it so that she never became that. So that you could know her. Oh, I've been gone so long now. Who knows if she's even alive. I think maybe she is alive or dead. We could help those who have befallen that fate. So Perhaps. even if she's not alive, we can also help others who are just stuck. The Mordant Spire is not a place for weakness, but clearly you're a lot stronger than I had ever anticipated you could be. That's where we come from, Reese. Way up there. When our home was destroyed, you and I, we floated out to sea on some flotsam, washed up on the field on the shores of Skjoldmer, up near the lands of the Lenorm Kings, right here on this point of the map. That's where Gunnar found us. Oh yeah, found them on the side of the, the coastline. They were starving and skinny. 
gave them some, some loot of fisk and fresh water, brought them back to life. Wasn't long before you this uh it wasn't long before your sister saved my life and I swore a life debt to her. And I died by her side, and I'll do it again. As he puts a, a hand on Adelina's shoulder. Thank you, Gunnar. It's a very good, like, super Scandinavian hing der ding der dong der I'll be 100% honest, it's my impression of Spongebob's Leif Erikson. Doing Leif Erikson day, yes. yes. I was like, that sounds so much like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just doing Lee Ferrickson day. <laughs> Reese looks to everyone and is just like, this whole time, I haven't known myself. Not really. And this whole time, I've made sacrifices for everyone and everything that we've encountered, even. Even if it hasn't been the easiest. If there's no other good that we can think of doing with whatever wish we decide to use, could we go with my sister's intended wish and maybe help others? If you guys don't mind, that is. I know, Zavid, you said you had um, ideas for yourself, and I know this is very I, much I, myself, but... I just wanted to know what the parameters of such a wish could be okay. for future reference. So that if I ever were to come across the opportunity to make a wish, I could have a good idea of what is allowed. Okay. Uh, however... The next wish we get might not be from someone who we have gained favor from, like Balak Makar. Instead, it could be someone who's a bit more duplicitous and tried to screw us over. So I think if we are going to make a wish as important as what you've said, we should use this wish for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Reese looks over to his sister's like, well, let's do it. We've waited long enough. And if we could meet my our mother... That's more family that I never had before. Well, known of. Well, that's very selfless of all of you. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, and Khan is like <laughs> clenching her fist. Uh, I'm gonna go and uh, pat you on the shoulder, be like, I know. We are owed the next two wishes we come across. <laughs> So. Reese more so is doing this for his sister's sake since she kind of died for this. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. Balog Makar stands in the center and in a gout of fire, he disappears and f standing before you is the large visage of the Ifriti Balog Makar, which I have a picture of here. Balog. Those pointy shoes. I need yes. to get me a pair of some pointy shoes and some harem pants. Long black horns that curl upwards behind him. His shoulder pads are massive and red, adorned with uh, black obsidian um, pointy curled shoes, uh, holding a bit of flame in his fingers. And he says, You wish to make it so that your mother never became a listener. Is this correct, Adelina Guiltleaf? She says, Yes, I wish that my mother had never become a listener. It is done. I mean, a bright light goes out and expands in a sphere outwards. And he says, she is at your home. Where is home? The sky ship? And uh, Adelina walks up to you and says, Home is the Mordant Spire, far to the north, near the land of the Lenorm Kings. The, why does that ring a big bell? Uh, lands of the Lenorm Kings. Are those like dragon kings or something? 
Uh, there is an AP about the Lunorn Kings, yeah. Mm. yeah. I think they're... Uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly what they are, but yeah, there's an AP about them. Uh, can I, can Zavid make a, a sure, check? To, sure, I know, I know maybe you're, you're still kind of like limited on what you know, no, but I want to. I got this. Yeah. I've I want to see if I've heard of this. Off the top of my head. Let me see here. Because so out of game, that rings such a bell. I'm like, wait a minute. That seems really important. Okay. okay. Uh. Yeah, I can see very, it on the map. Too. There are very wild, untamed lands. Uh, very. Uh, they were. Yeah, very um, like, Nordic type type uh, barbarian tribe. -y. Uh, lots of big, big animals. Uh. And yeah, they the Linorm kings would have to go out and slay a dragon in order to become king. Or they would slay a Linorm, which is essentially a, essentially a dragon. All right. Yeah. So that's kind of what you know. They're they're very kind of Scandinavian style, uh, tribe warrior. It's type all people. you gotta be Beowulf to become a yeah. king. Se yeah, seems basically. right. Got it. Yeah. So that's about uh, all you know with that role. I think that uh, Gunnar and Adelina, Vinyanka. You should all go with haste to this land and, and check on whether or not this is the case. However, if I could be provided a, a, a full name and maybe the picture of her, I might be able to contact her and see if we can get an, a sort of communication going so she knows to expect. Well, her name is Leilani. Leilani Giltleaf. Leilani Giltleaf. And then I asked to see the locket. And yeah, she'll pass it to you. And I uh, kind of think about the name. And I look at the face. And then I'm going to use Mork's Cunning Sending to oh, uh, try and call Leilana or Leilani Giltleaf. Leilani Giltleaf. I did not expect this. <laughs> I Wanna believe in Mork. Uh, so we can... Yeah. Let's yeah. do a quick intermission. How about that? Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Thank you so much. Hope everyone will join us.
Hey everybody, we're back. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, when last we left off, Luxatumbra had accomplished quite a bit. They'd returned to the throne room of Ma'at, the Song Pharaoh, after completing the Labyrinth of Shimon Sek. They have resurrected uh, the shortly dead corpses of Adelina Guiltleaf, the sister of Rhys, and Gunnar Gunnarsson, the uh, uh, Adelina's uh, adventuring partner in crime, so to speak. And... They had used the genie's wish that they had earned by defeating the labyrinth by wishing for Reese's mother, Leilani Guiltleaf, to have never become a listener. That's where we're coming back in. Because Zavid, you have this locket. It's a very personal item that has a connection to this, these people, this family. Uh, and you use that as your component and spell focus for casting Mork's Cunning Senden. And because you use this, <laughs> because you have this focus, this very close locket, you get a boon from Mork. And in addition to the, the audio component, before you appears a flickering visual of an elderly elf woman with long curly gray hair. She's lovely. There's a gray cat sitting on her shoulder with a, bra a black face. She stands with a curled brown stick as flowers growing off of it. Before her floats a book that she appears to be reading. She goes, she says, who's there? Uh, hi, this is Zavid calling you about your extended warranty. Zavid! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, hi, listen, uh, Lelia Lalani, Lelani. Um, this is a, uh, is this the 25 word version or can we just do no, a call? You can just keep yeah. Okay. Uh, That's just I'm message. here. I'm here with a special uh collect call from your children. And then I turn the phone and projection over towards uh both Adeline and Reese so that you can now talk to your mom. She looks and she says A Addie? Adelina and Reese. My Reese. Hi. My baby. What? Where have you been? Both of you have been gone so long. It's a joy to see you again. You know, saving princesses from castles, uh, defeating dark evil. Oh, well. I always knew you would be something, Reese. Adelina, my goodness. And you look over and your sister's face is just frozen. Just absolutely staring wide at her. And she says, I never thought I'd see you like this again, Ma. It's good to see you. We'll try to get home soon. And Leilani looks at all of you and says, well, who is this, this then? All of your friends? Oh, um, well, uh, there's a lot of you. <laughs> Reese is just like, oh my god, it's my mom. Oh my god, it's my mom. Oh, thank god my Thanar's not here. Oh god. <laughs> um, well, this one over here is Khan the Bloody. She uh, is an oh, nice excellent to meet you. rogue. Well, I wonder how you got that nickname goodness it's uh it happens a lot when she just goes right at it she ends up covered in blood it's... Ooh. well you know a little club soda will take that right out dear <laughs> and uh my friend over here who is fresh and as ever is Zavid. He, uh, he's a big reason why a lot of us are back. He's eating a big thing of jerky. Ah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, hi, we met. Yes, yes, we we had a moment. Yeah. Um, Have you met her, uh, Reese's foster dad? Hey, Balag, it's your turn. <laughs> well, now, I never thought that I would see you, but, uh, yes, I am Balag Machar. I, yes, I know my appearance might be a little frightening, but your Adelina came to my palace many years ago with Reese. 
They're quite powerful. I've watched over Reese as my own for quite some time. He will always have my eye and my protection. You did this, you have my word. Miss Leilani. And she seems oddly okay by seeing this huge Ifriti <laughs> talking about raising her son. She says, Oh, that's wonderful, dear. You just, you do seem quite strong, and I appreciate what you've done for my boy. No. My I'm heart. Gonna, like, I'm gonna, like, uh, silently point to Anyanki and Ma'op to, like, stand in the corner away so the undead don't scare her. Like... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's smart. Uh, so they'll kind of boop away out of the shot. Um, also, they... there's mm -hmm. one other, uh, but I'll let my sister, uh, you know, I'll let her introduce him. Oh yeah, these are. This is my friend uh, Gunnar Gunnarsson. Son, he he saved my life more than once. Oh, it was nothing. She saved mine even more than that. I'd be nothing without your little Adelina. Oh, a strong arm on that one. Well, it's wonderful to see you. Hopefully, you'll be able to come visit. Little Jimmy here, he would love some company. Wow. <laughs> the cat kind of paws down. Yeah. That'd be nice. I, after everything is gone a little bit better than it is, I'd love to come back. Well, come save the world first. Okay, I guess I can do that. Take care, dearies. Bye now. And the spell fades. Click. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a wish w worth casting. I'm glad you got to speak with your mother again. Yeah. I feels like the first time ever. But I... It feels like the first time all over again. I thought I'd lost her. To that damn tower but to see her the way she was and i was a wee girl it brings a smile to my heart as you're all having this moment can you give a perception checks on the tower that's what i need ability skills there we go It's just, it's like, I wonder what this is for. And it's just like a little goblin walking amongst us and pickpocketing <laughs> each of us, and none of us see it. <laughs> right, though. Uh, it is a goblin, though. Tying your shoelaces mm. together. Um, <laughs> you know, this, as this whole conversation is happening, you know, you're not super a part of it. So you're looking down the hall, and you see a goblin running down the hallway towards you. And after a moment, you oh, recognize that it's, it's Major Domo Brahim, who I can share his art here. This he's a short goblin who wears a fine yellow silk robe. He has red eyes. He's very distinguished. Always has his his notebook about him of the itinerary of the day for the king. Um, but he he runs in and sire sire sire, the gate, the sandstorm, the wall, it is down. The elementals, they've they've wandered into the desert. The, the wall is down. And Balag Makar walks forward to the edge of his balcony and says, What say you? The wall has come down? Yes, yes, the elementals, they're wandering into the desert, they have stopped casting, the wall is down. Also, is he still in his Ifrit form? I thought he, that was like, he they is. had to leave the room when he, he went is. to Ifrit form. And oh. as, he's, as he's saying this, Balag Makar says, Everyone, we need to get to the gates of the city. And a vast flash of fire at the feet of every guard in the room explodes out, and each of them appears as the as a true jinn. Some are beautiful air ge air genies, blue of skin, floating upon a cloud. There are powerful meridi with swirling water about each their arms. The Where once stood bugbears 
are powerful armed Shaitani earth genies. And down at the south of the, oh, my screen's getting full, down at the south of the throne room where once stood the, the bugbears with great swords sta stand sand golems, or sand elementals, my, my mistake. We must get to the front of the city, now. Like you got it, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah let's go. <laughs> I got, got, uh, <laughs> all right. Zavid, roll me a religion check. Uh, yeah, sure, let's do religion. Oh, and there's one last one. Where once stood Major Domo Brahim, Major Domo Brahim, no one can stop him. Domo <laughs> Stands the powerful, long, with a long white beard, a a a air gin, a genie with a with a single scimitar and a long top knot. I like how he's got his little mustache like this, twirling <laughs> his his hairy mustache. Yes, this is what you see in front of all of you. And there's so as you're kind of. I assume running out the the front. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so let's just. <laughs> Can I close that map? Excuse me. Uh, not I, quite. I was no? one other okay. part I want you Thank to you. see. As I just running... kind of look at my aunt who has true sight, like you knew the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> we were the ones who brought the gin to the palace. We designed this palace. Uh, more on that later. I hop on Ratra. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see that even where once were dancing goblins are uh, water a dancing water genie and a and several dancing earth genie. Let's see, da, 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 where is I like it? that the earth there genie are swinging around swords. Like yeah. oh Jesus, dangerous. So you get you race to outside the palace to the front of the city. And I'll share this art where once stood this impenetrable wall of sand, 300 feet soaring into the air. It is now clear. Ooh. Nice weather we're having. <laughs> <laughs> and as you get here, this Ma'at says, Well, we summoned the, the sand elementals and the genie to guard this place. Strange that they would abandon their post. And Zavid, with that religion check, I need to look up which one it is. You remember, Alcturn the Stranger. And let me bring up this image here. You remember that Alcturn the Stranger, when it comes into alignment, it was predicted that sandstorms would weaken and air elementals would become lethargic. Um, I am going to bring that up and I'm going to turn to Major Domo and any other genie and say, uh, if you feel lethargic or uh, sort of uh, like the energy has been sucked out of you, know that it is Octurn the Stranger in alignment. And I turn to the Meridi and I say, if any of you feel really angry or aggressive know that it is breath of the cradle in alignment the planets are fucking with your minds try your best to fight against your uh, these sorts of urges and be aware of how they affect you that is very good to know thank you for the advice says the major tomo to you and he looks to all of the the other genie and he says speaking to them in oran at this point I and telling them, giving them orders, explaining what you're explaining. I assume you just give them a pamphlet, point out all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, the ones that look like they uh, are most interested. Here's a pamphlet, tell your friends. Uh, <laughs> keeping track of how many pamphlets I got before I got to print more. Nice. Um, give, give me perception checks in the tower, everybody. One other thing I forgot to mention. Oh, good lord. Yeah, Zavid, uh, as you are running towards the front gate, uh, you realize that when you first entered Shimon Sek in the, the parade, the Prince Zavid and Khan parade, um, oh, yeah. ev there were goblins everywhere. They, they surrounded your parade. As you walk back towards the gate, 
everyone is an elemental. There are no Look goblins at all in this city. There's not like a stray goblin like, I thought this was a goblin city, like, <laughs> who's like confused. There's one. There's one There's extremely one. confused goblin. It's like a tourist, like, <laughs> got a little camera. Uh. <laughs> but uh, essentially, yeah, puzzle. essentially, every single one in this town was a genie all along. <laughs> I may or may Reese. not have yeah. also uh, rave music going on in the background because the sandstorm is here. Brave music? The music from Brave? No, great. Uh, oh, great. No, 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 no. Brave. R-A-V-E. Nice. Oh, Yeah, because we can't have that because DMCA. I just have generic four-hour electronic techno beats. Perfect. <laughs> well, it is good that we know the the cause of this problem, and it is not the ba the doings of enemies. Mm. We need to muster our forces, bring our armies back. We know that they have sworn to protect us beyond death, even. Mm. Very well. We need to accelerate our plans. Come, Luxedumbra, gather round. We have something we need to tell you, give to you rather. You completed our journey. For 8,000 years we slumbered, waiting for one such as you to come and bring us back when the time was needed. And here we are, we have completed this labyrinth, sent Zalishkar of the Bitter Flame back to the Nine Hills. But there's more still yet to come. Khan, the bloody Ritzolo, your blade struck down foes many times your size. With the strength of Horus, you strike out to protect your fellows and the world. The alignment of the heavens ensured we all aligned as well. When the enemies finally unsheathed their sword, ours must already be at hand. We shall bring back our armies to the sands of time. Yet, we are no general. We offer to you the title of Serdar. Lord Commander of the Song Army and Blade of the God King. What? Huh? When when comes the time, you shall command our armies. Khan is speechless, just like mouth slightly agape. We saw what you do on the battlefield. You are a genius with that blade. Balag Makar has sat on a throne for 8,000 years. He's getting soft around the edges. We will raise the armies, bring together the forces of Osirion, alive and dead, jinn and mortal. But we are no strategist. We need you. As much as you need us. Uh, I will endeavor to be the best I can. Khan is like, like scanning through her mind. Has she ever read anything about battle strategy in her life? And as she does this, she holds out her staff and she says, behold, the army of song. And I have just, I'm just doing this because this art is incredible. <laughs> From the sands beneath you rises hundreds of undead soldiers coming up from the sands, who stand in formation, and look to you and to the pharaoh, salute, and then march into the city of Shimonsek. The Song army shall be yours to command against the forces of Rovagak. So what say you? Do you accept our title? I do, I do very much so, thank you. Very well. On the bloody Rizzolo, Serdar and Lord Commander of the Song Army, Blade of the God King, arise. She looks to you, Zavid. Says, Umbromancer Zavid. It is because of you that our ascension to Lichdom was complete. For eight millennia we slept, waiting for one such as yourself with the skill and wisdom to bring us back when the time was right. Fate 
has brought us all. When, uh, fate has brought us all together, and our wi a wise god king would be remiss to ignore this gift. Our glorious kingdom shall aid in this coming war, and your counsel will be imperative. We offer you the title of Grand Vizier, Sand Sage of Osirian, and Voice of the God King. You shall speak on our behalf. You have the right to treat for us in our name. You have the full diplomatic power of the land of Osirian behind you. Whereas Khan is our arm, our arm, you shall be our voice. Uh, looks at my not trained in diplomacy skill, and I'm like, yeah, all right, good choice. <laughs> oh God, how am I gonna swing this one? <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, now I'm looking at Reese, like we need to have a chat. <laughs> can we can we trade these? I might need I, I might need help. tutelage. Yeah, I might need I might need someone to teach me how to talk to people. That can be that can be done. Yeah, no. that's that's no issue. Yeah. And lastly, Reese, Guilt Leaf, the Heart Seeker. You came to my our city as a child, and were left here through no fault of your own. A long century spent wandering within the walls of our palace. Each brick created by a powerful elemental djinn. You may not know it, but you have felt it. The power of the elements has infused itself deeply within you. It makes your muscles stronger, your senses sharper, and whispers knowledge and skills to you as you slumber. Tell us, have you ever awoken better at something than the night before, thus to forget it the next day? Way more Force. than I'd like to admit, yes. Our elemental connection is within you. You were steeped in it from infancy. We need only awaken it. We offer you not a title, nor a parcel of land, but truth and power. You are Suli, genie blood, the same as we. It only need be released. Yes, I don't need money. I, well, I do need money. Um, or title or land. I, I know where my home will be. So power isn't too bad of a deal but well and she places her skeletal lich hand upon your forehead and a white golden light enters into you your skin flashes blue it flashes white it flashes a brown it flashes red and then goes back to the normal color but you seem to be glowing nearly and you now have the Suli ancestry, and in addition, you have the elemental assault feat, which, for a single action once per day, you shroud your arms and held weapons in elemental magic. Uh, choose one element. Until the end of your next turn, your strikes deal an additional 1d6 damage of the indicated type and have the trait corresponding to the element. Electricity for air, bludgeoning for earth, fire for fire, or cold for water. So you can add an elemental d6 to attacks. Holy crap, yes. And in addition, it changes your low light vision to dark vision. Oh my god, he can see in the dark finally. Mm hmm. Oh that is god. what Elemental Assault the spell looks like. So I'll fix your character sheet at some point later yeah. for all that, but you have awoken Reese Guilt Leaf's Suli Genie Blood. Damn. You're muted, Chain. Right. Examples of Suli that I put in our Discord that are fucking badass looking. <laughs> Ooh. Let me see. It's, it's basically slow. the yeah. Pathfinder yeah. version of Genasi, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they are the su okay. So there's five kinds of uh, genies in Pathfinder. There are Jin or genie, which are the air elementals. There's Meridi, which are the water genies. There are Shaitani, earth ones, and then there are Ifriti, which are fire, and Suli, which are all four elements in one. In one. Maat, oh, is, I see. Maat is a Suli blooded human, and now Reese is a Suli blooded elf. It's like a, it's an alternate heritage. Or whatever you're an called. avatar. Yeah. I, yeah, I yeah, yeah you're basically the elements. avatar. Yeah. <laughs> and so now, whenever you get an ancestry feat, you can take Suli feats in oh addition to elf feats and goblin feats. You just have more options now. And you have dark vision, and you have that spell, Elemental Assault, to 
add elemental damage to attacks. That's wild. Cool. Pretty sick. Yeah. Re yeah. Yeah. You, you guys get magic items and stuff and cool pets and Reese is just like... <laughs> All right, I got a boyfriend and some magic genie blood. Dope. <laughs> <sighs> Holy shit. That's oh, so cool. this was quite an adventure. I wonder if... Oh, huh. oh wait. Uh, Yeah, so you explained the, the sandstorm thing, right? About Alcaturn the Stranger, be. Yes. And, uh... On Yonkis says, I wonder if the storm surrounding the Windseeker is and he has been wakened. Give me society, Reese, in the tower. Yeah, that sounds about right. Hmm. Society! Okay. Uh, you... Ask Zavid for his map of Assyrian, because he has it. Uh, and with that roll, that ridiculous roll, um, you rolled performance, but it was Oops. a nat 20, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, wow. Yeah, that I yeah. should have. Okay. It was a nat 20, though, so it's fine. Uh, yeah, you know that the Eternal Storm is here it's just southeast of shimon sec on some days when the sun is just right you can actually almost see it from where your bedroom was in the, the lotus palace yeah um it's like jupiter's big red spot you know it's just this storm that just kind of sits in one spot it doesn't move around well unlike jupiter's big red spot it doesn't move around but it's just this kind of permanent sandstorm that's always in this one place um and yeah, you know exactly that it's right over the mountain of Zifon Ra, which is a single mountain in the middle of a desert, sort of like the the, the lonely mountain of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, and Anyanka says, I wonder if this alignment has weakened the eternal storm any. If it has, we could probably find the Windseeker. We crashed up at the top. Maybe a possibility. Where are you needing to go? Well, honestly, we're looking for our queen's sister. And uh, we've been told she's kind of, you know, the eye of the storm-ish. If I uh, recall. You had, you had said you were looking for the desert lily, yes? Uh -huh. And you remember that that is it. And then my aunt says... The Desert Lily is a, a moving sandstorm. The Eternal Storm sits in one place. It sounds to me as you are looking for Monhatnus, the Great Zartan. It is a large turtle that moves about the desert. The nomads seem to talk about it quite a bit. It's very difficult to find, especially if you are looking for it. One needs to nearly be lost to find it. Do you recall that? <laughs> But those who wander, are they lost? Not all who wander are lost. Well, you know, finding this wandering turtle storm would probably be easier from an airship. Yeah, yeah, it would. Do you... You said your ship hasn't probably moved? Well, we crashed into the top of the mountain. And, uh, well... We were, well, our goal was to get to Shimon Sec. We figured fixing it would be secondary. We'd do that when we were done. We never got the chance to. Getting out of that place was easy. Getting back in with that storm would be something something difficult. Reese looks to everyone. Thoughts? Everyone being the party. <laughs> <laughs> Want to go find an airship? I could probably fix it, you know. You are really good with that. I You're am one of the best yeah. crafters. I can look at it and make it think it's gonna look pretty though. I I'm not good with my hands in the regard of crafting. Well, we could definitely try to get over there. Uh 
about uh, what? what about the uh uh Zavid, didn't you uh have a spell that made the um that made hot hot and other creatures able to fly I do, but I'm also very tired because we just mm. got out of a labyrinth, so I'm out of a lot of spells. You should probably oh, I, rest. I could probably use a sleep myself, <laughs> even though I've been asleep for a covenant knows how long. I do have safe passage, but that's only for like a small stretch of land. If it has mm. like hazards or traps, we can avoid. Gotcha. So um, I, I'd, I'd honestly rather have you regain things, wait sometimes so we could recharge and then you can actually be more useful for Zavid. <laughs> Personally. Can, is, is this something we can do or is it the, uh, are we going to lose uh, the advantage of time if we wait too long? Well, how, how long is this planet supposed to be in alignment for? Quite a while. We've got a we've got a long time, like yeah. a few months. And I don't think we're at least that pressed for time. Oh god! Is there a bed that's not made out of coins I can sleep on? Absolutely. <laughs> of course, there are many beds across the Lotus Palace. You can have any of your choice, or you Except can even mine. go within the city. Get out of my room. Nothing. Some things never change. Whatever. If you choose, you could stay in the palace. Uh, however, if you would like, you can also find some place in the Shimonsek market. I'm sure there are plenty of beds comfortable enough for every, any of you. I love how you opened up the Shimonsek market, but the only thing that opened for the longest time were the Just cats. The little chariot, yeah. <laughs> oh, are they still on there? Yeah. I didn't mean for the. Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> didn't know they were still on there. I like the map of this market. It's nice. Yeah. I just wanted to show you the map of the market. That's what the Shimon Step market looks like. Well, I quite personally have missed my bed, so I'll happily stay here, at least tonight. But Very I well. can join with everyone um, <laughs> otherwise after if you don't want to stay here i uh i need to rest uh what time of the day is it oh it's late like <clears throat> sun is setting our sun has been set and can you yeah. just because i'm selfish can you turn the the ma ma mark the I market can. into nighttime i can give me one <laughs> sorry i, I can the market, no this is but, yeah abs no I'll, I'll reshare it in just okay. a second yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Love that. I absolutely can. Fantasy Grounds is wonderful. <laughs> Let me Roll find... 20 needs to get on it. It does. Yeah. Let me see here. This is great. I like this. Okay. Uh, I would go out into the sort of marketplace with whoever wants to come with and find the most... Uh, accommodating place to sleep that will allow me to take a uh an undead horse a mimic a giant uh <laughs> mummy minotaur uh maybe maat if maat's coming with if not that's fine um we think we will stay else. in our palace yeah you have a palace that makes sense <laughs> uh so so my little menagerie and whoever else wants to come with, I'll come yeah, out. I'll go with Zavid. Okay. I Sorry. nearly have an image. Give me just one moment. Oops. Do not make it a PNG. I learned my lesson ages ago. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Okay, I know what I'm going to call it. You're going to hate me for it. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait. Y'all did this Ready. to yourselves. Ready to hate. Let me throw it in here, and then I have to... It's just, it takes a moment. Mm -hmm. yeah, finding fresh assets takes just an extra couple of seconds. Gotta unlock it. Wonderful. Is it gonna be somebody's uh, bed and sack fist, like Shimon's sack? <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's good. good that's good. 
I do like that the bed is sec first. Sixty? Well, that. And work? you have to you have to pause and say it so people get the pun every time it's how pronounced. <laughs> yeah. It has a built-in <laughs> pause. The, the bed and sec fist. Great. So. Reese walks in. Where's the sex fest? <laughs> <laughs> take off the Lumator, take off the art. Sorry, this is taking it just a second. And then I need to find at least one more thing. Here we go. Okay. Wonderful. So I can load this now, finally. You are wandering around town uh, in the market in the middle of the night, and you're trying to find somewhere to stay. I want you to give me some sort of a check, a uh, survival check, or if you're asking guards, a uh, diplomacy uh, society, check, something, maybe? any of that. Yeah, your dealer's choice. Can you I'll do society, if that's all right. So I can make it full screen. I can. And I'm also, uh, if if it fails, I'm going to be like, do you know who I am? I am the Sage of Sand, the Grand Vizier. <laughs> you I always wanted to say that. something like that. Do you know who I am? Do you have any idea who you're speaking to right now? I just got this position and it's already gone to my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you said you, you get rid of the dragon that. sickness and there's a different way to inflate your ego. Yeah. <laughs> just immediately. Uh, <laughs> what's what is this one this is like a big headed sickness and the odds <laughs> just like he's barely had this position and he's already gotten another curse <laughs> okay so how are you attempting to find this place are you talking to people or are you just looking around I'm, I'm talking i'm not being i'm not being shitty I'm, I'm just uh now that i can see everyone's an elemental i'm trying to find Either the nicest looking or just the coolest looking elementals <laughs> uh, that might know something. And uh, gotcha. I'll come up and say, hello, the, do you speak common? Oh, I, yes, I can speak the common tongues. Great. It's a, a jinn, an air jinn, air jinn, genie. Uh, so, hey. I couldn't help but notice you're an air gin. Give him a pamphlet. Uh, Octor and the Stranger, gonna make you feel a little bit more lethargic in the coming days. Be aware of that. I was wondering if you knew of a place that could accommodate me and my friends and my pets uh, for the night. Uh, oh. You wave after pet. I go, you're my friend. <laughs> you're not my pet. These are my pets. And I uh, look over and there's the mimic and the, and the minotaur. Oh, they're with you? Okay, just one sec. I forgot about that. Yeah, well, since they're following us uh, yeah, yeah, out of here. Just, let's yeah. see. I just don't have them on the combat tracker. No worries. Wait, combat tracker? What the fuck? No, just, <laughs> I need them on the combat tracker in order to put them on You the want to stay map. in the city, you'll have to defeat me and my seven brothers. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I just want to rest. That's all right. And then I'm make... slimy and tired and need a nap. <laughs> Uh, I don't so need to get less slimy. I like being slimy, but the tired part I want to fix. <laughs> who all's with you? It's Yukon, Rotrot, Hoppy Onk, and Chompy. Anyone else? Mm. No, I'm just going to let them have their Yeah, Reese is at the palace. I think the Windseekers are probably going to stay Con, at the palace as Con well. and your little, your little loud chapeau are at. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, I, have... I think I have a... Do I? I don't know if we nope, have I I any other them. NPCs with us. I think the Reese oh, is going to be with too. family and their Gunnar and all them. Mm -hmm. And their Gunnar. There we go. Gunnar. So eventually, yeah. Oh, yeah. You were speaking to this elemental. And they, they kind of look at all of you and they say, not the strangest thing I've ever seen in this town. But yes, there's good accommodations just across the river there. Uh, sure. It's called the Just Deserts Tavern. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's not, as, that's, that's, not, that's not as we just as, as not we as, elsewhere. I'm not as angry at hearing that as I would be for others. That's pretty <laughs> good. Just Deserts. I like it. Thank you. I came up with that off the dome. 
yeah um, there's a there's a coffee roaster that i've been to called desert oasis uh ah. but it's dessert, dessert oasis. oasis so it's mm -hmm. the reverse of that yeah nice nice yeah so you do eventually find it's kind of a small hole in the wall very it's still the aesthetics are very goblin-y they're very desert uh, motif but it's still kind of ramshackle sort of put together with this and that uh but it seems comfortable and warm um there's some lights coming through and you see a sign that says in several languages, De just Desert's Tavern. Uh, I'm willing to sort of tie up Rot Trot, um, and I am going to speak to uh, Chompy in the Momotar, and I'm going to say, Now, if you want, uh, there should be... I'm looking around. It doesn't... I don't know if there's like a lean-to or stables or something, but I'll... Try to find a place like on the outside like if you want to chill out in the sort of the cool air outside you may i don't know if they welcome mimics or mummies yet i will i will ask and if it, you can come in i'll let you know okay yeah the, the flush ale could also be nice to them they've been in a, a level of yeah actually you've been eight thousand years eight thousand years cooped up maybe you want to be outside for a night <gasps> And uh, Hapionk goes, like, points to its eyes, and then points to the, the night sky. Oh. All right. Jumpy, you, you stay with your buddy. Make sure he's safe, okay? <clears throat> yeah. Jumpy, stay with, uh, with Hapionk. Oh, I'm going to... Wispy. I bring Wispy. I'm like, hang out with your new friends. Get to know each other. <laughs> I can do that. I have Wispy. Yeah. Where is... Whisk, there he is. Yeah. Oh, he's going to be giant on the map. Oh, ah! God! Uh. <laughs> you grown a lot! <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, At least I warn you when that's about to happen. Yeah, yeah that, thank that you. Would look frightening. For the battles. <laughs> for the final battle, Wispy, uh, like, turns into, like, a kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> Fights Rovagug 1v1 me, bro. Oh, yeah. Very Mothra vs. Godzilla type of moment, yeah. you know? That would be amazing. Uh, and yeah, Khan, you have Pipette up in your uh, in your cloak. Oh, and you have a Draco Lich as well. That's right! You have, yeah. Again, this we is got a lot of huge. pets. We yep, do. There it is, huge. <laughs> but uh, the Draco Lich is with you as well. You have a lot of pets it's, it's... at this point. <laughs> The Draco Lich has just been, like, hanging out in Khan's backpack. Um, she didn't want to bring it out. It would be too dangerous for this oh, baby. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but you've been feeding it coconuts. You kept a bunch of coconuts inside your bag of holding. Uh, mm -hmm. Jean Bart and Francois Le Debonair, the skeleton, showed you how to properly, you know, you give it the, this coconut and it sinks its fangs into where the little natural holes are and it drinks the milk like it's a little bottle. You've been taking great care of your, your little Draco Lisk. Uh, but yeah, you guys have a lot of pets at this point. It's getting a little a little wild. I like it. I have a question. Mm. A lot of game here. Has anyone ever seen uh, the Pokemon movie and the little uh, Pikachu's vacation yes. part in the beginning? Yes. yes. I want to see a short animation of all of our <laughs> pets trying to find us. Like, we go missing and they all Ooh. team up like Pokemon. Do they, oh where did they God. go? Let's find them. And then the, the thing is, they're led by Mythenar. <laughs> yes. The kobolds. He's like, I don't really understand kobolds. why I'm included. I feel like I'm a person too, but okay. He just <laughs> the kobolds upon. would go too. That would be yeah. an amazing side quest. Oh my uh, god. Uh, very penguins of Madagascar type of <laughs> flavor there. Day. There we go. Now everyone looks like it's nighttime. <laughs> uh, ding Gonna walk in. A hey, uh, oh, I had. I had a name. It's like his stools are kicked over, like, ugh. Well. And it is rather empty in here, but there is a, a fire in the center. And out from the back, you see a... Oh, I didn't get, I get the picture. You see what is clearly an air gin. Uh, she seems to be somewhat happy, uh, in a good mood. She has brightly colored outfit and... Uh, she was, the sword is at her hip in a sheath. She's not brandishing it like that. Uh, she, <laughs> Welcome! <laughs> uh, instead of legs, she has a little bit of a whirlwind beneath her that slowly curls back and forth beneath her. And she comes out and says, Oh, welcome to the Just Taverns. How can we, how can I help you? I am 
Oh, what did I say? My name is Tempest Vong. How can I help you? A good name. Uh, Thank you. I say, well, uh, we need a place to sleep. I have a lot. We have a lot of animal animals outside that uh, some of them might be more comfortable inside. Some of them might be comfy outside. I don't know if you would allow any of them to take refuge in here if it is oh, better. Okay. That is not a problem at all. Uh, we service all kinds of animals from here, there, and everywhere. Uh, they are welcome to take up on the post. We have a trough for water and food. Uh, are they uh, herbivores or carnivores? Mostly carnivores, if they eat. Uh, two are undead, cannot eat. Uh, the other two are very much carnivores. Um, actually, I, I, I look outside and I see that there's there's more of here. I'm like, oh, actually, make that four carnivores. <laughs> or I guess three Wait. carnivores, and I look at the rat, and an omnivore. Anything I think that guy will eat. Then uh, Tempest waves her hand, and on the table just to your east, a large platter of several different meats come in uh, up here, and I can actually do that. One second. Uh, wow. It's wow. real magic. Yes, it's <laughs> genie magic with a bunch of meats that just appear on this table that you are able to then give to all of the pets. Uh, I'm just going to cast Ghost Sound and make the sound of a dinner bell. Ding, da, ding, da, ding. Come on in. <laughs> And they will all do so. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I, I look at Rot Trot. I'm like, you stay outside. You don't even eat anything. <laughs> he gets up on his back legs. I I turn to the GD. I'm sorry. I, they get excited. And Con, your pipette comes out of your cloak and says, I think I might get something to her and slithers onto the table and starts munching on uh, a piece of meat. <laughs> but the, the Dracolisk seems fully content to hang around Mama, uh, who has the coconuts as well. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get one for it. I'll, I'll cradle it very nicely. <sighs> ah, quite the menagerie you've got here. Uh, an impressive display. You are all adventurous, no? Oh, yes. Was, was and, it that uh, obvious? We like we, we don't like killing everything we see, so we end up adopting a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Uh, very impressive collection. Huh? I see many travelers through here. Huh? I'll be honest, it is quite freeing to not have to wear that goblin suit anymore. Uh, since since the, the queen has dropped our illusions, uh, it's quite freeing. How do you feel about uh, living here, I, I guess? You are, are surrounded by many of your kin, so that must be nice, but uh, do you miss your home plane at all? Or? Well, of course, I, I do miss the plane of air. I will likely visit soon, but this has become my home. I was summoned here many, many years ago to, for purposes of guarding the labyrinth, you know. Each of us was. Uh, we knew our place. I am not as strong as some, but uh, I am part of the stones and the bricks of the city. Again, being able to talk openly about these things is so freeing. I'm glad you're responding positively to us uh, getting rid of your job. Um, <laughs> we sort of put you out of work a little bit. Uh... I do not really need your, your monies. Like, uh, uh, I had to pretend when I was a goblin. But, uh, I enjoy hearing the stories, seeing the people. They're strange who come through this land because only the strong can get to Shimon's sake. Thank you. <laughs> That's like gives him a little ego boost. Like, all right. I'm like, God, we're strong. Only the strong yeah, can come yeah. here. Um, so, uh, can we get something to eat too? <laughs> or is it oh, only yes, for our course, pets? Of course, I apologize. So, one moment. Uh, Thank you. And she again floats over to this table and with a magic flourish, a really good looking feast comes up. Uh, let me see. 
That's I, I so convenient. You don't have mm -hmm. to cook anything. You just snap your fingers and then boom, you have it whatever is. you need. Quite nice, yes. Uh, we are able to create food, create water. It's very handy in the desert. Uh, not uh, not many people have this ability. Oh, that is just a potato, an onion, and a carrot. That's not helpful. I know I have a, t I have a <laughs> lot of right. assets of food, but you get I'm gonna, it. I'm going <laughs> to use my, my power of imagination. Power imagine of imagination. a beautiful face. Thank I saw you. a hook. I know that imagination can become real. It absolutely <laughs> can. Turns into a delicious paste. <laughs> yeah, that you fling it. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna say, so wait a minute. Beforehand, you had to pretend to like cook. You had to go back and like pretend like you were cooking a meal and be like, ah, it's been 20 minutes. It's probably long enough. And then you come out with the food every single day. That sucks. <laughs> you get used to it. This is not so bad. I mean, since most people are also elementals, did you uh, did you keep tabs on travelers? So if there were no travelers, you didn't need to do any of this. You could just kind of be yourselves. We caught a little bit here and there, but uh, the the magics kept us in our goblin form. I have I have not seen myself as myself in uh, many 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 long years. I look around for a mirror. Uh, just, is there a mirror in here? Yeah. Uh, along the northern wall, there is a mirror. I think I have a mirror as Okay. <laughs> so she's been able to actually see what she looks like now. Yes. I was going to see okay. if I had like a little, like a steel mirror or something I could provide. Like, this is what you look like now. There we go. Yes. I have to nice. be able to see myself. Yes, it has been. It's, it's new, but also refreshingly old at the same time. So, I guess I want to ask some questions, if you don't mind. I'm sort of new to the desert. We we got here, immediately went into a deadly labyrinth and killed a demon. Uh, <laughs> no, the general. Yeah, oh. that was that's our introduction to the desert. We don't know much about the rest of this, this great and vast land. Maybe you could help us out. Well, of course, of course. And she floats and sits down upon one of the stools, but it's just the, the, the tip bit of the tempest beneath her just kind of barely touches it uh, as she's sort of floating above this chair. I but thought maybe like she might like, she put her butt down, but there's a little whirlwind that prevents her from touching. So she's like floating over. <laughs> yeah, she can't quite, she's not quite touching the chair. I can tell you whatever you'd like. What are the winning lottery numbers next week? No <laughs> kidding. Uh, Within the reasons. Uh, I suppose. Have you had any? Have you left this city in eight thousand years? I mean, are no. there any sort of expeditions outside? Oh, maybe I'm. Maybe you don't know as much as you as I thought you might. We only uh, know what the travelers who come into the city tell us. Okay, that could still be useful. Perhaps you could tell me what the. Uh, any rumors you've heard, especially in the last like 10 years or so, uh, trying to give her uh, an actual time limit of things that might be useful to us about uh, what's outside this city and some of the dangers we may face. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I have heard tell of uh, caravans being attacked by roving bands of either undead or strange large animals fearsome creatures with larger fangs than you would expect on a creature of its size accents all over the place <laughs> no worries i uh good thing we're not a caravan we're safe uh so because <laughs> they always the caravans they're not attacking us uh <laughs> what about um that ever swirling storm in the shape of an elf maiden's face uh how long has oh. that existed and uh, the desert you... lily i the desert lily is well it is part of a storm that moves around the desert uh from what i know it conceals a giant tortoise that walks around the, the deserts these tales say that any of the wandering nomads who get lost within the desert get found by the great tortoise. But if you go to search for the tortoise, you cannot find it. It can only find you. Cool. It seems that 
the, the, the tortoise has been in the desert for many long years, many thousands of years. It is possibly an immortal tortoise, but the desert really is relatively new, only perhaps a century. It is a vision that people get in the desert that I have only recently, well, recently for me, been hearing about in the travels. They see the wandering storm. It does not follow weather patterns like other storms. But they, as it comes upon them, it has the, the face of a great elf woman, a beautiful elf woman. Beyond this, I do not know. Pretty cool. Uh, so, you're 8,000 years old? At least, you've been here for 8,000 years. How old are you? 12,336. How, how old? 12,336. How do you deal with that much time passing? <laughs> like, what do you do for fun? Don't you get bored? You recycle hobbies. Plus, when you are an immortal, time flows a little bit differently for me. I suppose so. Sense. Yeah, it does not. Uh, have to. Yes, it. Otherwise, you would be going mad if you could not see time in more directions than the one that mortals experience. It is difficult to describe, but uh, uh, there is boredom. But uh, you you learn to deal with it with with enough time and practice. So, you did you were like born though? Like what? How how are genie born? Are you just like sneezed out of an air elemental and like then you are alive or what happened? The elemental plane of air wheels us into existence with pockets of denser air. It is the same for the air of the land of fire. In air, in little hot pockets, hot, hot pockets, little hot spots, they uh, they become denser and they form into a, a, a an embryonic element. We are birthed from the dimension itself. Were you ever a child? I was never a child, by the way. I was birthed out of a pod, fully formed and cool. Wow, <laughs> and she's gonna roll something. <laughs> sure, let me roll a deception. Uh, she, hey, yeah, roll your deception. Beat a 14. Okay. Yeah, she looks to you and says, I have seen many fetchlings come through here in my time. I know that you are not pod people. You're Don't not? Damn it, the jig is up. All right, I thought it would be cooler if I was. How cool would that be, though, right? I mean, come on. It would be clearly cool. I'm like, sorry, I cool. lied. I'm sorry, I lied. I, uh... And then, actually, he gets a little nervous. He says, I don't remember my childhood very much. It was kind of not a fun time for me, so... I uh, don't like to think about being a kid. Um, seeing little Reese... And then your parents, I don't really have the benefit of having that. So it, uh, it's just sometimes easier to say I was not a child. Though I'm starting to realize maybe that lie is a little too easy to sniff out. Maybe I need to pick a different story. I wish I was just born out of like a pocket of air and wheeled into being. That would be way cooler. I have heard many rumors that there are more Kyal in the west, the southwest of Osirian. Oh, cool. Uh, and I'm looking at my map. Where is that southwest? You still have it open? You're open. Yeah, so Lost Fortress yeah. of Mekshir? Or is it uh, further south? Further like southwest. more. Uh, I've heard tell that uh, the Kyal have come into contact with the, Le the ghouls of Leng down near the Kiliktura Oasis. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's great. That's great. They say there is a city beneath that oasis. So I have heard. And I, I don't, don't think... I don't think Khan knows about this. Nope. Neither Khan nor... Yeah, Khan is the only one there. That's right. <sighs> yes. Uh, I have been truthfully interested a little bit in figuring out what's going on there, but... Uh... Let's just say that I don't always get along with my own kind. Oh, are there fletchlings? 
Yes, Kyle is is, is another name ah. for them. Um, Khan, would you be my friend if I told you something really gross about me? I would. I would. Yes. If I can, uh, if I if I can be your friend after learning that you know you out bone from a pod, then. Uh, I mean, I've seen you do a bunch of stuff, Zavid. I don't think anything's going to change. All right. Cool. And then I look over at Tempest. I'm like, Tempest, you're in on this now. So you're about <laughs> to learn some lore. Uh, and she she swishes her hand and says, here's bringing the tea. And she summons uh, a teapot and a bunch of tea, <laughs> teacups. And the teapot levitates and begins to pour fresh hot tea for each of you. And I'm also going to I'm going to pause for a second. And I don't know. We're probably going to swap over to uh, Reese. So I don't mm -hmm. know what Reese is in the middle of right now, but I'm going to use Mork's condescending and call Reese. Ring, ling, ling. Reese. Hey, hey, wow, this is new. What's up? Hi, it's it's me. Uh, look, uh, I've learned some things from this very nice genie named uh, or Jin named Tempest. We're at the Just Desserts. Mm -hmm. That's that's a uh, desert deserts. You know, like oh, the good. desert I we're in. They have really good food there. Yes, yes, it's yeah. pretty good. Um, so I'm talking with Tempest, and uh, we learned some things. I want to inform you. Um, I just want you to promise me that you won't hate me if you learn something bad about me. I mean, I told you about my my weird family, so like, yeah, go for it. All right, then put you on speaker, and then I put I put another finger out, so now it's speakerphone. And I don't know if that's how it works, but I believe that's how it works, and that's kind of how Mork's magic works. So that's how it works. <laughs> yep, that's exactly um, it. If you believe that it works, it works. That's literally how Mork's magic works. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm gonna do it like this because that hurts my finger. Um, hmm. so I uh, kind of put my hand on the table and I say, uh. Now this is uh there are some things that I, I am compelled to do in to, in the service of my god Cabriri. I have sort of tenets I must uphold in, in order to keep his favor. Some of which is I am not allowed to impart upon you non believers the secrets of undeath. I can tell you that I can't impart them. I only break that tenet if I actually told you what they were. Uh things like that I have to keep. Right, and I'm all I'm okay with that. And most of you aren't even interested anyway, so it doesn't matter. But Kaburi is a god of ghouls, not, and I say a god because he has a bit of a, uh, a sort of a tiff with Nyarlathotep. The Leng ghouls worship, by and large, Nyarlathotep. Kaburi and other ghoul uh, has domain over other ghouls, but he insists he is the first ghoul. Not Nyarlathotep is an outsider deity that stole those ghouls away from him and made them believe that he is a sort of a usurper god, right? Now, I wasn't there. I'm siding with Kabriri, kind of because I have to, uh, but I'm I'm willing to believe that because Nerlathotep is a dick anyway. So let's go with Kabriri's narrative here. He is the first of the, the ghouls, right? If this is true, then you know that maybe he requires some pretty fucked up shit from his clergy, right? Yeah. yeah. So one of one of the tenants, uh, yeah, I've got to go hand on the, on the table. I've had it like this the whole time I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> we just stick to one the book. Of, Yeah, yeah. I just not even thinking about it. Like just got it like this. Uh, and I, I actually believe it in a sense, I guess subconsciously. I'm like, if I if I move my hand, it's going to break the connection. Um, <laughs> Again, if you believe it, the more the more you believe it, the more better it works. <laughs> That's how the <sighs> magic works. We've got a we have a really clear signal. Uh, <laughs> So, what do you know of ghouls? Mm, roll, I lot. want you two to roll stuff, actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you have uh, Laura on death, you can roll that. Yeah, yeah or <laughs> religion or arcana or occultism. Mm -hmm. Really, any of the five knowledge checks, just not society. Okay. Well, or four knowledge checks or undead lore, <laughs> any of them okay. in the tower. Uh, you know, if I could, if I could do a homebrew rule for uh, Pathfinder, I think if you have a lore, I think your lore should automatically scale. 
Mm, like as so. you get to certain levels. So like when you're mm. level seven or whatever, it goes to expert. Gotcha. Or so no, you don't no, have level... to burn the skill increase. Mm. Yeah, because like they're so niche. Yeah. Uh, and because you have that, it would make sense that you continue to expand upon that, right? You get that better at it. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Khan, you know that you've killed a lot of ghouls in the past. You know that they have a jump, that they're really good at jumping. You know that um, if they claw you, they have the potential to paralyze you. And if they bite you, they can give you ghoul fever. Mm -hmm. about all you know. Yeah. Reese, uh, you specifically know that elves are immune to claws. That's it. That's all, the, all you two know with those rolls. Okay. And Reese was like, yeah, I'm kind of immune to their bullshit, um, but that's about it. Not much. Well, as Laura would have it, Kaburi, uh was one time, at the one time in the ancient past, a mortal elf and the first to turn into a ghoul. So elves are not completely immune. You're immune to the paral paralyzation uh -oh. because that's the connection, right? Because he was the first and he was an elf. That means that you as well would not be affected, but you could still turn into a ghoul with ghoul fever. Hmm. But why would they bite, right? What do ghouls eat? Do you know what the ghouls eat? Meats, probably. Yes. Yes, the flesh of the living. If they can get their hands on it. Why you love it? They'll eat. They'll eat dead things too, but they prefer things that have been freshly killed. Uh, they are. They are sort of. They gorge themselves on the flesh of not just things that they've killed, but their own kind. It is a cannibalistic sort of diet. So, how many people have you eaten? The More than I would have liked. What does it taste like? Is it as good Not... as meat meat like you eat every day? Uh, no, because our diets uh, are usually we have we eat sweets and really bad food. And so it makes us taste bad um... uh, when you eat like a cow or something. They eat one thing all the time and it makes them taste a lot better. Hmm. It's usually so a healthier don't diet. Eat you got it. Here's the thing. You have not seen me eat anybody, and the reason is because you can you it's cannibalistic, right? You eat your own kind. Well, I came to a world that had very few fetchlings, very few Kyle, because this is not the plane of shadows. So I didn't have to worry about it. When I left, when I became a cleric for Cabrari, I was compelled to eat the flesh of a dead person I knew, a friend of mine, that I did not want to eat. And when we went into the Underdark, before we met you, Reese, we traveled through the Underdark to get to Druma. And I found a, a bunch of these fetchlings from our plane that had ventured into this plane through the Underdark. And I had that compulsion again. And when I say compulsion, I mean it. I cannot deliberately disobey the tenets of Cabrera. So that also means even if I wanted to tell you secrets of undeath or whatever, I physically cannot do it. This also means that if I see a dead Kyle, I physically cannot stop myself from eating or her. I don't like it. Cabrera gets a sick kick out of it. He like he thinks it's hilarious or something, and the fact that uh, he feels very secure because I can't willingly not do it. So like, uh, if I ever were to ask where should we go from here, like the Underdark thing, that was his idea. I think he knew. I think he knew that there was some Kyles down there. That a, hey, you know what you got to do now. Uh, we have a, a sort of a, a tenuous relationship. Oh my God, and I. But thus far, I have been pretty good at avoiding them. However, lately has made it clear to me it has been too long since I have done this sacrament. And uh, our new friend here, Tempest. Hi, Tempest. This is uh, on the phone. We have, we have Reese. Uh, hey, Tempest. You probably, how you doing? You probably met Reese before. Well, yes. The, 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 
the princeling from the palace. I am not a little man. Yep. Uh. So. She's there drinking is a... three cups of tea simultaneously. <laughs> her, t- her tail is holding three of them. It's just sip, sip, sip as you're telling the story. This is very, that's very talented. Uh, the city of Langus to the south, uh, I knew about. What I did not know is that there is a group of fetchlings who also live in the desert. My god, decided not to tell me about them. Uh, <laughs> so now... I was planning on investigating this city to try to turn them to our side, like we did when we traveled to the Plain of Shadows and talked to those ghouls. But if I see Kyle's, it's worse than dragon sickness. Uh, the, re- the only reason I've been able to resist dragon sickness so well is because I have another deeper, darker curse on my soul that is much more... Uh, powerful than the remnants of somebody else's sort of greedy whatever i i i does not put me into murderous rage but if one should die or be dead in front of me i cannot help but eat them i this is a i only feel comfortable telling both of you this because you seem to be more morally ambiguous than our friend Demirius, who would have straight up killed me had he heard me say this. So this is why I've kept it a secret for so long. Um, I also didn't want to make Danny upset. I always felt like she would have judged me pretty harshly for something like that. I mean, considering I was gaslight, gave, keeped, and girl bossed most of my life, this is nothing. Go eat. When you gotta eat, you can't help it. I couldn't help forgetting most of my childhood. So, it's okay. Sometimes, you just gotta do what you gotta do. And, you know, I'm not gonna judge. It might be... I might make a face. Like, oh god, dude. But, like, I'm not actually judging. I understand. He looks the con. I I empathize with your situation. I I guess the only question I have is if uh if you are, you know, intent on uh going to this place uh and meeting with other fletchlings, um is there any way that we could help you? Do these Kyles drink monster and or punch things? <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's Kyle. I Savit's getting emotional for the first time. He's actually starting to get a little bit because he never expected that you guys would accept him uh, in this way. Um, so you asking if there's a way you could help you with like, are we going to kill someone together? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he like, he kind of calms down a little bit. Uh, he asks uh, Tempest for like a handkerchief. He uh, manifests one in front of you. As she is a genie. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, he, he dries some of the, the tears. He goes, um, not all Kyles are cool with this. I grew up in a cult that was not part of regular fetchling society. These fetchlings are making contact with ghouls. I don't know if they're part of my cult. I don't know if they are just random fetchlings with a completely different cultural idea about how the world should work, following different gods or whatever. Generally, it is frowned upon to eat your own kind, even if they have died. It's sort of disrespectful, right? However, because all... People are individuals with different sorts of attitudes. If there's a shitty asshole fetchling, I would not mind eating them. (laughs) I would not even feel like I need to resist this sort of like compulsion of mine. I would just do it. Um, So if we find a really shitty fetchling, maybe we can orchestrate a way to sort of uh, take them out of the picture. Uh, And I don't know, maybe... 
maybe uh, they have some fresh dead that had nothing to do with us, and you can help me sneak an arm or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's no problem. I can... Yeah. Arm, leg, I'm in. Like I said, I don't <clears throat> like doing this. I need to be very clear. I don't enjoy it, but it's also the reason that I've grown more powerful. I have to recognize that this compulsion is what has allowed me to continue gaining power from Cabriri. It's less of a, I worship him, and more of a, I couldn't stop even if I wanted to. And he knows it, and he derives a lot of pleasure from that fact. But I thank you all for being so understanding. I mean, dude... I also told you guys I, like, haven't always been this much of a handsome boy. So, like, you eating people, and uh, I can accept that if you can accept that I'm not always as what I see. So, it's good. Uh, I have another confession to make. So, I'm you know that's... No, I'm not a ghoul, no. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that the series of the Bard and Barbarian... Uh -huh. Um, I, I, I had a strong suspicion it was about inappropriate topics for a long time. Like I was kind of playing dumb a little bit. I knew, I knew, I wasn't. <laughs> some stuff caught me by surprise. I'm start. I, I, I had, I had a pretty good idea about why they were doing the things they were doing. I just don't want to be underestimated as much now that uh, I. I'll be honest, I like the reaction that it got from Danny. It was really funny seeing her freak out. Um, I mean, yes, always. I'm always in camp, freak Danny out a little bit. You yes. know of the Crisp and Moonlight and Anology? It is one of my favorite books. Uh, I do. I Tempest <laughs> and you appears a is copy it the of whole nine books series on the table. Yo, <laughs> that is all said. I've had many travelers and merchants come through here in the last eight millennia. I have collected all of them. Yes, the last two volumes are like the hardest to find. Can we get a few copies of those to send out to our friend who would really like to finish the series? Of course, she's kind of doing queen shit right now, so like. Tempest, you're like quickly becoming my best friend. You just heard <laughs> my like deepest, darkest secret. We're cool about it. And now you're giving me like these rare books that I can give my friends. So I have an infinite amount of time to run my inn and get more. Take them. Very, very fair. Make your friend happy. And so I will put into your bags <clears throat> the full nonology. <laughs> I want it to be known that I, where I am, my time zone, it's uh, 4.20 p.m. And I just Six. got the whole Bard and Barbarian chronology. Uh, so, hell yes. This is a good night. This is a good night. <laughs> One, well done. Yes, it took two years, but you got it. Got them all. It's like Pokemon, man. You're gonna, uh, like we got to tell Ash. Got to tell like, Ash. We found <laughs> them. <laughs> I'll let you tell her since you did it. All right. All right. Yeah. Yep. You get to Just tell Ash. Just ping her in the, in the chat. <laughs> yep. Happy to help. Uh, with the story I have heard in the last uh, hour or so, it is worth the trade to me. You are being very hospitable. Thank you so much. I have I, met uh, many people in my time. You seem good people, and you are clearly strong for having beaten the labyrinth. I have seen many adventurers come and try and not leave because they die. Yes, uh, death is very frequent occurrence around us. We've been lucky so far to avoid it. I, uh, I was wondering, um... What will you all do now that you're no longer charged with the protection of the labyrinth? I know your boss. By the way, Balak Makar, everyone's like, oh, he's softer on the edges. Literally, his six pack just looks like a human six pack and not the supernaturally inhuman six pack that like the Shaitani have and stuff. So like, it's like he still looks really good for, you know, lo lounging around for 8,000 years. If that's what happens after 8,000 years, I think he needs to chill. He is a good leader. Uh, I like Belak Bakar. Uh, he has allowed me to run my inn the way I want for as long as I want. As long as, you know, I run it as a goblin. 
He really likes goblins. He does. I thought he was a goblin all my life. Uh, huh. It was not our choice to keep up this ruse from Yuris. I know. And, uh, I, I heard him mention something. Uh, the, he said that there's a, a babe with the... Uh, this was... Wait, what was this? This was a speakerphone. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I heard that... Um, there was the the babe with the power, the power of the babe. Was that That's, supposed to be you, Reese? Are yeah. you the the babe with the power? <laughs> I am the powerful babe. What power? Yeah, I have the voodoo, who do you do? You know, <laughs> I have what? all of that. Yeah. I think was the were you always goblins or was the goblin disguise for Reese's benefit? The goblin disguise was for to throw the off the tracks anyone who had come into the city. Everything about Shimon Sek is a distraction. It is to, to throw off the weak-minded. Uh, the labyrinth was never supposed to be accessed by anyone who is too weak of will. If you are so weak of will that uh, a couple of belly dancers and a little drink can distract you from your mission, you have no business being in there. Yeah, like where do you think I learned my moves from? I had time. I learned this, the best from the goblins. Or if the thin. stories I tell here at the tavern are enough to distract you from your mission, then you have no business being in the labyrinth. Ah. Everything here is meant to weed out the weak. So only the strongest to, could even enter the labyrinth. That alone completed. You guys are really good at like the whole pick me up industry. Just making us feel real good about ourselves. I appreciate that. <laughs> Return business is the best kind, and word of mouth is the best marketing. True. Well, so, uh, you need to go to bed. It's like almost like half past <laughs> your bedtime. It's a little bit past my bedtime. Yes. Um, I don't know how to tip you, Tempest. You would say you really don't need the money or don't do it for money. What can we do for you for being so hospitable? The stories I have heard are more than enough. I appreciate them. they are enough. Well, if you ever want more stories, you know who to call. I got a lot of stories. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Your beds are prepared for you in the upstairs if you need any foods. She uh, puts, waves her hand again, and some breads and different, you know, foods that'll stay good overnight appear on the table. Uh, a couple of pastries, pieces of bread, that kind of thing. And she says, "If you require anything, you may simply call for me." And she eventually just wisps back into her back room and eventually disappears. All right, I'm gonna let you off the call, Reese. Thank yeah. you for. Being cool. Uh, with whatever you're doing, I hope you're okay. No. It's have, good. have a good family reunion. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hmm. Oh, I think that he's like it is his bedtime. Yep. All right. Uh, and then I do the the dinner bell sound again. Ding ding ding. All right, everyone, get ready for bed. <laughs> and all of the the pets and the mounts and the the mummator the mimic all get they all go back outside because they all want to sleep under the stars for once uh and everyone drifts off into a nice sleep much deserved long rest is given let me give you that before i forget overnight rest everyone should be healed yep there we go you should have all your spell slots back uh you should be fully healed any like weird issues you had should be gone. Uh, wonderful. I can change the time of day as well. Let's see. <laughs> Love fantasy grounds. So let's see. What time is it? Two thirty. It's been three I hours. I think this is a good place to stop. I think this is a really good place to stop. Yeah. Actually, this is a really perfect spot. Uh, naturally, yeah. So you each go to bed. You drift off into a nice restful sleep. And that's where we'll stop. We'll pick this up probably next week uh, and see where we go from here. Uh, hope everyone will join us. Thank you so much for being here this week. And we will see you uh, hopefully next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.